Welcome to today's special edition podcast. I am actually streaming live in my backyard. We're talking Millionaire Mentor Workshop. I have not done one of these workshops. I used to do them it's about a year or two ago, and um, I don't know why I stopped, probably just got busy. But uh, I'm gonna be, for those of you just listening in, I'll be sketching some stuff, but don't worry. I'll make it so that if you're just listening to audio, you'll still be good. But I wanna ask you this question, all right? What would happen if you had a millionaire mentor? An actual millionaire taking you step by step, guiding you through the things you need to know that they didn't teach you in school. That's what changed my life, okay? So I'm writing here on the board, you know, what took me from having 100 bucks in my bank account to let's just say making over $10 million a year in my businesses, it's actually a lot more than that, but never tell people how much you actually make. First rule, give you a little millionaire mentor tip. Always under exaggerate. So we'll under exaggerate. We'll pretend that that's how much I, I do, even though it's low. Hundred dollars to a hundred million. It's not because I'm smarter than you. It's not because I was born, you know, in the United States and you weren't or something. I don't. I don't know if I love the fish eye. On this one, on the yeah, Instagram. We can take it off and show people. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it shows my feet, and I'm barefoot, and it's also yeah. Okay. Um, so I had five main millionaire mentors. Okay. And yeah, Joel Salatin, Alan Nation. Somebody said, Ty, are you gonna hide how you make your money? No, I don't hide how I make my money. But let me ask you this question. For some of you are too stupid to understand what I'm gonna talk about on this call. Mark my words. At least 50% of the people watching this are too ignorant to understand what I'm talking about. Just mark my words. You can look at the comments, you can just look around you in life. You think people know what they're doing financially? You are lucky if in one year you run into one person who knows what they're doing. Seriously. And even people that you think are making money, they don't know what they're doing. So when it comes to somebody was asking, hey, Ty, why don't you say exactly how much money you make? Well, if, you're, if you are so dumb of a person that you tell everybody your social security number, if you tell everybody your bank account login, then good for you. But you want to have a level. And so this is just a little side note because I'll be just dropping little tips throughout this, but I'm gonna take you through 12 important things you need to know. But the first tip is, most people are stupid. Let's just face it. Most people are ignorant. The opinion of the masses will lead you down the route that is diametrically opposed to logic. The exact opposite. So let's talk about the right path, because the right path is much more narrow. All right, so here's the 12 things. By the way, some of you are in my actual, I, I created a small test group of people. I started this on Friday and it's closing on Friday. And basically I'm taking a handful of people in my test group, I'm gonna mentor them for 12 weeks. Okay, 12 weeks, Monday through Friday, personally mentoring them, I got a group, we talk every Tuesday, so on you know, we go through it, and then I give them stuff to do Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday. So what you're getting right here is like, I'm gonna do a little quick summary of what I'm teaching them in depth, okay? So the first thing is, here's my little list. I thought to myself, if I could go back in time from having less than 100 bucks, you know, the other day I was, um, I put a screenshot on my Snapchat, and you know, I've made $19,000 in an hour. Every hour, I get an email. It tells me from different businesses like how much money I'm making, revenue. So I made 20 grand in an hour. I've made more than that. I've made 100 grand in an hour. But I was thinking back when I was growing up, my mom never made more than 20 grand in a year. And here I am, you know, making that in an hour while I wasn't working. I wasn't working that hour. I was literally walking, doing something else in my house. I forget what I was doing, reading or I took a shower and it made 20 grand. 
Okay. I posted the screenshot. I'll post them again. I can show you. I get them on my phone here right now. Let's see what I made last hour. There you go. I'll cover this up to not see the exact details, but there you go. I made $6,680 in the last hour. I made $92,000 today in one of my businesses. 92 grand today. So, like I said, some people go, oh, Ty, tell me everything. I'm not going to tell you fucking everything. So, if you want everything, go whine to your mommy. I ain't, you're not related to me. You ain't done shit for me. Everything I give you, I'm giving you for free right now. So, don't be demanding on my ass. I'm serious because, let me just write this down. Or actually, I'm going to just say it out because it'll be easier. Here's the 12 things that I think you got to know if you want to be a millionaire. Number one, you have to be trained how to spot opportunities. You see, most people think the world is in recession and the world has a lot of poverty. It does have a lot of poverty, but most of the poverty is rooted in ignorance, lack of good education system, lack of opportunities, but yet there's opportunities everywhere. For example, I was showing people, where's that bag of beef jerky? I was showing beef jerky. I was at the grocery store the other day and I saw beef jerky and I just did the math. I did some Googling. They're charging you $4 for a bag of beef jerky that cost them $1. Beef jerky opportunity. 4Xing their money. 400% return on beef jerky. Opportunity. You see there's a company called Blue Apron. What do they do? They basically make food preparation easy for people. Multi-billion dollar company. You could right now start a business if you were, had any cooking ability, charge 20 bucks a meal or even 10 bucks a meal, pay a delivery driver who you can pay 10 bucks an hour to deliver to the food, get 50 clients that you're cooking for, healthy meals, you know, and you're making 20 grand a month. That's a money-making opportunity. There's money-making opportunities everywhere. So the first thing you have to know, look at this beef jerky right here. It's freaking three ounces of beef. A cow gives you 100 pounds of beef jerky. This is three ounces. They, you get five of these out of one pound, 500 bags from one cow. There's a guy, I was listening to a Wharton in business school. He took a beef jerky company and sold it for $300 million in two years. Did you see that opportunity? No, because most people are ignorant and most people whine too much. Most people, are you trying to figure out how much money I make? People spend all their time trying to figure out if my Lamborghini's rented. In that time, they could have bought a Lamborghini themselves. That's how stupid people are. Trust me, I reach 200 million people a year just on my Facebook tar retargeting pixel alone. 200 million people. And the number one thing I've learned since 2014 when I really started doing social media is how stupid people are. Not IQ, though. That's the sad thing. They have raw, latent IQ power, but they choose through improper programming, improper programming. How do you get programmed? Well, parents. My mom programmed me that it was normal to make 20 grand a year. So I was programmed that way. It wasn't until I was out of the house over 18 years old that I realized, wait a second, 20 grand, I can make 20 grand an hour. Right? People are, I have two German Shepherds. My German Shepherd dogs can't think into the future. They never worry. They never dissect opportunities. They never see their dog food and go, hmm, this puppy chow that I'm eating here is, you know, the bag is 20 bucks and it only costs Purina two bucks to make it because I actually know Purina is manufacturing their dog food in Colombia because I know a guy that has a factory there. How much do you think they're paying those Colombians? You think they're paying a lot of money? No, they're not. So my dog is not smart enough to see a money-making opportunity because it had an average dog has the IQ of about 20 to 50 IQ points. 20 to 50. That if a human had a 20 to 50 IQ, you would be considered handicapped. Under 80, you're pretty much handicapped. So we we give the dogs a pass because they got low IQ. But everybody on this call has a high IQ relative to the opportunities that are out there. You just ain't seeing them. You're not seeing the ones in dog food. You're not seeing the ones in food delivery. You're not, and now some people will say, but Ty, I do see them, but I don't know how to do it. So for those of you, there's the number two thing. 
that I'm going to talk a little bit about today. Money making routines. People who make money have a different daily routine. You think I got the same routine now as I had when I was making, you know, under 100 grand a year? You think my day is the same? Do you think I plan it out the same? So let me ask you this. How well planned was today? Do you have a real routine that you're following? Or are you just scattered and you just reactive? Reactive people don't make money. Three types of people in the world. There's people that watch things happen, people who make things happen, and people who wonder what happened. Most people are in those two categories. Very few people are making things happen. So you got to know money making daily routine. And I'm going to come back through this and give you, you know, a little more details. Then you got to understand money making investments. The definition of investment for the purposes of this conversation, okay, money making uh, uh, investments would be passive investments. So you have two types of ways you make money. You have active right now your job if you have a nine to five job or if you own a business that would be considered active income even the IRS will consider that active income for tax purposes and there, the IRS has another category category called passive income so when I say investments for you to understand the millionaire mentor mindset and to understand what I'm talking about in this workshop you have to understand how to make money work for you while you sleep like I told you the other day I made nineteen thousand dollars while I was doing something else in one hour while I was taking a shower and get ready for bed. Just I showed you the last hour, I made $6,880. I was in a meeting, um, I was actually with my accountants, <laughs> is what I've been doing. But I, money was being made for me. I wasn't at a job, I wasn't handing people coffee. I wasn't, now I'm not looking down on anybody who has a job because I had low level jobs too. I worked on a farm doing manual labor. I worked in construction, I've done it all. So it's not me looking down on you, it's me saying, I've seen both ends of the spectrum and there's another spectrum but you got to have the ability to understand how to invest money. Did you learn it in school? Who here knows the difference between knows what Brent crude oil is prices? Do you understand the difference between the different crude oil prices? No, they could have taught you in school but they didn't. Do you understand how commodities works? Do you really understand the difference between what a uh, what options are? Do you understand um, what a REIT roll-up is? Who here knows what a REIT roll-up is? Not a fruit roll-up. <laughs> Some people know what that is. A REIT roll-up. That's a way that you can be involved in real estate and exit a real estate with basically paying very little taxes legally. That's called a REIT roll-up. You think they teach that in school? They don't even teach that in universities. You know who I learned that from? A billionaire mentor, a guy named Richard. I see him about once a year. He travels the world. He's about 68 years old. You have to have $2 billion before you can do a REIT roll-up. So it's not really practical for you, you as you're growing up, but you want to know what that is. The curious are the ones who become wealthy. Some people, as I told you, people, half the people on this call are stupid. They're not curious. They don't know jack shit about anything. Not anything of substance. They might know who Khloe Kardashian is dating. They might know, you know, they might be watching Shark Tank, but that ain't enough. You know, that's great. You watch Shark Tank. You think NBC or ABC freaking going to teach you anything about business? Give me a break. They're trying to make money on you. Come on, man. Number four, you have to understand money-making relationships. By the way, this is the 12-week curriculum that I'm training a small test group of people. Now, that test group will be closed Friday, by the way. So some of you are already in. For those of you in, congratulations. I'll put a link towards the end of this if you, any of you want me to personally mentor you for the next 12 weeks, but I'm doing this one for free, okay? I don't do everything for free. Some people say, why isn't everything free? I'm like, shit, what's wrong with you asking me stupid questions like that? What do you mean, why isn't everything free? People will pay gladly for junk food. You know how much money Coca-Cola makes making people diabetic? <laughs> you know how much McDonald's contributes to the national obesity problem? And everybody who walks into a, a McDonald's gladly pays to eat poison. It blows my mind. And then people are like, Ty, how come you charge for educational programs? Shit. Go to community college then. Go back to your community college, son. We're talking 10 years. Money making relationships. How to read people. How to understand dark triad. How to understand the business partners who will 
screw you over before they're your business partners. How to, money making relationship, how to hire people, how to hire an assistant. You have to be a master of people. You have to understand public speaking. You have to understand how to give presentations. You must be able to speak eloquently and well. You don't have to speak all the time, but you must be able to project your message verbally, and you must be able to read into people uh, and predict what they're going to do to you in the long run, because a lot of people, in fact, most people are what psychologists will call exploitative. They will exploit you. For, not because they hate you, but because they love their sel themselves more than they love you. That's narcissism. It's an epidemic in the world. Have your friends take the Hexaco, the dark triad test, the big five test, the most scientific tests in the world. You will find out that probably 50% of the people that your friends or acquaintances or business partners are going to screw you over in the next 18 months. I promise you. Money making lifestyle. This is number five thing that you got to understand. As you start to make money, I didn't understand that to, it's not enough to just make money, you want to change your life with the money. So I've seen people make a million dollars and then not add any enjoyment to their life. See, why would you do that? If you got married, would you say, I'm not going to have sex for 20 years? Would that make sense? Oh, you get married at 30 years old and you go, at 50, we'll start sleeping together. We're not going to enjoy all the parts of this marriage until we're 50. Well, that's what a lot of people do with money. They start making money and they live with the same poverty mentality. That actually happened to me. There was a time when I started making money and I did, my mindset hadn't caught up with it, so my lifestyle was subpar. I was trained, I had to be trained on how to spend the money you make. It's very important that you know. You don't have to buy Ferraris or Lamborghinis or whatever, but there are things that are important. There's a great book called The Happiness Hypothesis. There's some great research by a scientist named Martin Seligman, the most respected scientist on happiness and things. And they find there's certain things that money can buy happiness. I'll tell you where money can buy you happiness. It can buy you happiness in giving you more time and more freedom and in having other people do things that you're not that good at. So let's say you're not that good at cooking like me. Money can buy you happiness by having a cook cook amazing meals to you and you just eat them. Okay? So that's very important that you understand lifestyle. Money making entrepreneurship. So that kind of ties into money making opportunities. But what are the four P's of being an entrepreneur? You have to understand really five P's. I added a fifth one. So if you go to Harvard Business School, they might teach you the four P's uh, or the five P's. The five P's are personnel, product, pricing, promotions, and placement. You have to understand to be a good, well-rounded entrepreneur that has a potential to become a millionaire or beyond, you have to know those five P's. How do you pick the personnel? You're not going to run a good business by yourself. There's nobody wealthy that owns a solo business. They're always doing it with people. Bill Gates, the richest man in the world, has business partners. Even Jeff Bezos, who runs Amazon, is not a 100% owner of Amazon. It's a publicly traded company. There's thousands and hundreds of thousands of shareholders. And there's a lot of executives and they have compensation packages that include stock options. So you're going to have to do it with people. Number two, you have to understand product development. Most people come out with apps and products that nobody's going to buy. I could have told them that on day one. Do you know how to spot and identify and create products that have the potential to make you money? Okay, and then you have to understand Pricing. Pricing is, there's a great book called Smart Pricing. You can get it on Amazon. Two Wharton professors wrote it on how most people charge too little for their services. In fact, are you getting paid right now the amount of money that you think your 9 to 5 job, uh, at your 9 to 5 job, that you think you deserve? Or are you underpaid? Usually people are underpaid. And usually entrepreneurs charge too little. Sometimes they overcharge, but rarely. Okay? Now, then you have promotions. You have to become a master of marketing, virality. In the modern world, you have to understand video marketing. You have to understand YouTube. You have to understand Instagram. You have to understand Facebook. You have to understand promotions, marketing. And then lastly, placement. How do you deliver your products and services to people? A lot of people do that wrong, so they make too much work for themselves. You sell a service, and then it's two one-on-one. -on -one. So you're ending up having to deal with each customer one-on-one, -on -one and you burn yourself out. You got to understand how to 
properly place the product. So that's money making entrepreneurship. Then we have money making education. See what you know today and what I'm talking about today will be outdated in a year or two. What I'm talking about today will be outdated in a year or two. One of the things that the third richest man in the world, Warren Buffett says, he says what I knew in 1979 wouldn't have made me money in 1980. What I, made, what, what I knew in 1980 wouldn't have made me money in 1981. He said, you have to become a learning machine. And some of you are, and, some, and at least 50% of the people on this are not. 50% of, of the people on here can't name a book they've read in the last week, even though the average CEO and the average millionaire reads a book a week. Tell me about the book you read in the last week. You don't know how to self-educate. 50% of you do, but at least half the people don't. It's a fact. On average, the average person who, who graduates from high school or college does not read a nonfiction book from front to back, okay, for like seven years. People might start the first chapter. In fact, the average person never gets past the first or second chapter. So you have to understand money making, edu self education, how to do it. I'm continually educating myself. I spend over $100,000 a month on trainers and people who teach me. And people say, oh, that's so much money. Yeah, but that's how I make a lot of money. I know what the hell I'm doing because I hire people to teach me. It's so basic that people struggle with that. How do you become a good doctor? You pay other medical doctors at medical school, you pay them money to teach you how to do heart surgery and then you learn how to do it. But a lot of people go, oh, you know, I don't need to pay anybody. Okay, well, fine. You won't know how to do the high level skills that make actual money. I guarantee you. Next, money making happiness. Money causes quite a few problems. First of all, as some of you start to make more money, things are going to get weird with your family. I'm already telling you that. Just predict it. I'm predicting it right now for you. I don't care how much you love your family and you love, there will be some jealous person in your family, a cousin, a grandparent, an uncle, a sibling, a brother, a sister, who will do something shady as you start to make money. So you have to understand that your happiness is going to go up in some ways as your financial stress goes down, but there's going to be other problems that you have to know how to deal with. So one of the things in Millionaire Mentor Workshop is, is let's talk about happiness. How do you keep it? How do you make sure money doesn't get ahead of you and cause more problems than it solves? Next, money making fitness. I know so many entrepreneurs that as their bank account goes up, their body decays. Most if you do a saliva test on the average entrepreneur and run their adrenals, there's four phases of your adrenaline, uh, your adrenal glands. Okay, your adrenal glands, they're in your head. They basically are the part that um, regulate the flow of things like cortisol, adrenaline, all that kind of stuff. Complicated metabolic and, and hormonal changes in your body. But if you get too much stress all the time, okay, too much work on your adrenaline, you'll go into stage three or stage four of adrenal fatigue, which basically makes your body fall apart. You won't lose weight. There's all kinds of trouble. So what happens is you have to know how to maintain fitness. Now, you're not going to necessarily be a pro bodybuilder. You're not going to necessarily be as good a shape as somebody who spends eight hours a day working out. But if you understand money making fitness, as you make money, your body will at least stay, you know, decent. Decent, <laughs> um, hopefully better than decent. So you have to, then next, money making travel. Money will open up opportunities for you to travel. I had to learn how to travel the world. I've been to over 40 or 50 countries, okay? As you make money, new opportunities, new ways to travel, cooler opportunities open up. You need to be mentored on how to do it or else you make mistakes. I've made mistakes, it's been annoying. Now, money making job, uh, nine to five jobs. For those of you who want to take a longer approach to becoming a millionaire, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you can become a millionaire just by having a great nine to five job where you're highly compensated and you save money. So you have to understand, you know, the nine to five, there is a certain methodology that if I had a nine to five job, I would use to make more money, okay? Uh, money making execution. It's a lot of you understand everything I've talked about, but you never execute on it. Either you procrastinate, you lack the motivation, you overanalyze, so we call that paralysis by overanalysis. You're, you got your Excel spreadsheet with 48 options and you're looking at risk return and oh, well this and that, if I launch this business, if I quit my job, blah, 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 and you overthink it and you never execute. Big problem. And then money making mindset. There's many things. I created a program uh, in 2014 called the 67 Steps. 
I've trained over 150,000 people in 100 countries, uh, in over 100 countries, I think it's about 130 countries, on 67 mindset rules, how to think things through. They call them heuristics. If you're smart, you'll know what heuristics are. Heuristics are a method of how we decide things. There's, how did you decide what you ate bre for breakfast today? Marketing affects heuristics. A lot of people are eating junky cereal because there's a lot of advertising. They're feeding it to their kids, Fruit Loops, and their heuristics are, I saw it on TV, therefore Fruit Loops must be good for my kids. Coca-Cola uses that to manipulate people, so does McDonald's. You want to talk about the biggest scams in the world, it's the food system in the United States and elsewhere, trust me. If you think you're getting good food, you don't know anything. You don't. So when it comes to executing, I mean, sorry, when it comes to mindset, you have to know how to make good decisions. And then lastly, money-making trends. You have to be a master of not only creating trends, but seeing trends. And most money in the world uh, come from trends. Somebody who caught a trend before the masses. So if you look and name any billionaire, name anyone you look up to who in, didn't inherit their money. If you look at Bill Gates, at 12 years old, he saw, the, 12 years old, he saw the opportunity and the trend of personal computing. By 31 years old, he was a billionaire, okay? By the time most people are just graduating from grad school, you know, at 26, 27, 28, he was already worth hundreds of millions of dollars because he caught a trend early. Mark Zuckerberg was not the first to start a social network. You had Friendster, you had a, even AOL chat and things you, ahead of time. You had MySpace. I'm friends with Tom, the founder of MySpace. And, you know, Mark Zuckerberg came in, but he was in relatively early. You don't have to be the first to a trend, but you can't be the last. And a lot of people are so slow and they're so, they're called, they're basically low risk tolerance people. So they go, unless everybody's doing it, I'm not going to do it. And so a lot of people are trying to, I, I know people right now are like, I'm trying to compete with Facebook. I'm like, dude, that, that boat already sailed. They have almost 2 billion customers. You're not going to put Facebook out of business. I, and none of you are. I'm not either. Just give up on that. You could have done it in 2007. You could have been Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. Anyone on this call could have been Mark Zuckerberg if you knew and understood how to catch trends. So now let's go through these a little more practical and I want to give you at least one tip that you can take away from each of these. That's the curriculum, okay? I'm actually going to put a link. Um, what is the link? For those of you, by the way, who have to go early, you have until Friday at midnight. There's a real deadline if you want me to personally mentor you beyond this call. I'll just put this link up. Do we have a link? Okay. All right. While they're getting the link, I'm going to start through these. Okay. Let's talk here. I'm going to rip these off. I'll tell you a money-making opportunity. These stupid, I'm gonna use this as an example. This post-it company does not have a good design for these paper things. When you flip them over on the backside, they build up and they bunch up. So somebody on one of this call has opportunity. See the opportunity right here. You know how much money this post, I guarantee you, this post-it company does 100 million in sales on paper products. Guarantee you. And this is an opportunity, if you came up with a better design, you could patent it and you could sell it to them. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Money making opportunity right here. These markers are horrible. These markers right here, if you leave the cap off, they always, always dry out in a matter of one hour. Money making opportunity, who saw this one? Who saw this one? See, it, it's so, shirts. I got a friend who was making $1.5 million a year selling shirts, you know, I'm a month, $1.5 million a month. You know what, how he was doing it? Very simple. He was making t-shirts around local cities. So he would make a t-shirt for Atlanta. It would be like different slogans, like I love Atlanta, Atlanta fan or whatever. And then he would do Facebook ads only to people who live in Atlanta. 1.5 million, he was netting $500,000 a month before he was 30 years old with t-shirts. He basically retired. He's like 30 and he don't even work anymore. He don't even do t-shirts any do anymore. He saw money making opportunity in the fact that people are loyal to cities. People are loyal to cities. Somebody here, I mean, why not do it with countries? 
You can do it with countries. Why not do it? Um, you can't do it with brands. You can't say like, I love Nike because Nike has a trademark you know, protection, but nobody can trademark the city of London. Nobody can trademark the city of Los Angeles. It's impossible. It's against the law in any country in the world. So there's a money-making opportunity. I'm just looking at the things that are around me. How about this? There's a case on this phone. Whose phone is this? This is a crappy-ass case. What did the Kardashians do? The Kardashians made, they, it looks like they're actually being sued because someone says they stole their idea. They take a lot of selfies. They put lights around them. So when they take a picture, it lights up their face. I think that business has made over $50 million for Kim Kardashian. Could anybody here come up with this idea? Yes, but you're not trained in how to see money making opportunities. You're trained in poverty. Trust me, you're trained in poverty. Everything in the news, what's the news about right now? It, it talks about, oh, the, you know, the unemployment rate, the this, the recession, GDP, oh, it's 2% inflation. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't affect you. So it creates this false reality that we live in a world where everybody's broke. I live in Beverly Hills. You can't believe how much money people are making. I know people making so much money, and I'm talking about rags to riches people, not people who inherited money. There, I had a guy, I had a friend, two business partners. I won't say their name because you might know them. They're, they're real big entrepreneurs here. And when I first met them in, I think, 2012, they said, Ty, we know you know a lot about finance, personal finance. We need to have lunch with you. We've got a big problem. So I met with them, and I'm thinking, oh, man, these guys got a big problem. Maybe they're not doing as well as everybody thinks they are. And they sat me down like, we got a problem. We're putting $6 million a month into our bank account, personal bank account, and we're only getting under 1% interest. What should we do with our money? And I was like, guys, you called this emergency meeting because you're making too much money? You're making $6 million a month profit and putting in your bank account? And that's your big worry? I said, that's a worry everybody in the world wishes they have. And that it opened my eyes a little bit more to here's just people right here making $6 million bucks a month. There was two kids at my house. Uh, I did, a, I did a, a seminar in person at my house. I occasionally do those. Two guys that I trained starting one year ago. Samir and what's his other name? Has Juan. Juan. I don't even train them personally. They just come to all my seminars. They came to this seminars group, group, group coaching. And they were making under five grand a month one year ago. Now they're making $210,000 a year drop shipping on Facebook. They buy shit in China for $1 and sell it for $8 or you know, 10 bucks and sell for 80. But they're doing stuff under 20 bucks and they're making literally over $200,000 a month. At 21 and 22, they said, Ty, sometimes we have to pinch ourselves because we can't believe the money making opportunities. Now some people won't believe it. One of the things that I have an absolute rule for any of you who want to get in by this Friday into me personally mentoring you, if you are skeptical or cynical, don't come in the program because here's the deal. I'm skeptical of some things and I turn the channel. Only a fool watches a TV channel or goes on an Instagram or a Facebook or a podcast and listens to it if they don't believe in it. You know, isn't that funny? That pe that's how dumb people are. So for those people who don't think it's possible, who are of the poverty mentality, who think that yes, only, people only are always trapped, who think capitalism is the root of all evil, in some, if you're in some 1800s economic mindset, if you think Marxism was accurate and you think you read Das Kapital and all that outdated shit, then please go, leave. Nobody wants you. Make your own world. This is a big ass world. Go in the world that you believe in. If you don't believe in capitalism and you don't believe in individual opportunity, then you know. Sometimes people are like, I hate America. I'm like, well, fucking leave. <laughs> Go live in North Korea. Send me a letter at how well that worked for you. So the mentality of money-making opportunities, I want you this week, everybody you, everything you see, reverse engineer. Reverse engineer this pen. How much does it cost to make a Marks a Lot washable pen? I bet you this pen costs 45 cents and they then research how much they sell it for, four bucks. It's probably a 10, 20, 100x ROI. Now it's a smaller niche, but you don't need a big niche to make money. Understand this thing, everything, this iPad cover, this isn't the one that it came with. Why am I using that? There's money in creating better covers. 
more entertaining. This one's kind of boring. OtterBox has no design on it. Why don't they have a design? Why don't they buy the rights to an awesome design? What do you think people would rather have, a case with no design? I mean, I don't understand it. People like designs. Who here, I see money making opportunity right here. OtterBox is not doing it. They are the dominant um, protective case, I think, OtterBox in iPads and iPhones. Why haven't you grabbed the opportunity? I don't care if you live in India, Africa. You can do business in the U.S. from any country in the world almost. There's a few country America has sanctions against, but usually even then you can get around them. There's a guy who follows me who lives in India. I think he's 25 years old. He does affiliate marketing from India. He makes $10,000 a month in India. Now, let, let me tell you how much money that is. The cost of living in India is like a tenth of the United States. So he only has to make 10 grand a month from India to live the lifestyle as if he's making 100 grand. 10 grand a month in India at 25 years old? This dude's the pimp daddy. He can go to any nightclub. I don't know what a, what a bottle in a nightclub costs, but I tell you, I went to um, Czech Republic, a bottle there what country was I in? It was either Czech Republic or, it actually was like Sweden. A bottle at a nightclub is 200 bucks. 200 bucks, a bottle at uh, One Oak down the street here from where I live is probably about two grand. I mean, if you get a nice, a table. So it's 10 times. So yes, you can make more money living in the United States or a big city, but it costs more to live here. So it, it evens out, it's one step forward, one step backwards. The money-making opportunities are all around you. There's a company in Germany. There's, I think it's three brothers. They're now worth $7 billion. You know what they do? They copy everything that works in the United States and they do it in Germany. So they took eBay and they created the eBay of Germany. I forget the name. For $7 billion. Why didn't you do that? That's my question to you. Why didn't you? You think they're special? No. You think the Indian guy's special? You think Samir's special? First person I changed in the, really in the social media marketing agency program, Jaden Gross, never had a bank account last October, never had opened a bank account. Now he's making 105, he can make a million bucks in his first year. Why didn't you do that? That's my question to you. Why didn't you do it? And I'll tell you why. Because the system didn't train you how to do it. So keep watching. Okay, you can have this back. I'm not, oh, I, I can't see what that is. What is it? Let me put the link, by the way, for those of you who have to leave early. Someone said not everyone can do it, Ty. I know, because most people won't do it, because most people are ignorant. Most people are, there's three main problems with most people. They're fearful and overly sensitive, number one. Number two, they're proud, so they go, oh, I'm perfect already. And number three, they're stubborn. Which are you? So you're right, not everybody can do it. Because if you're overly fearful, sensitive, if you're stubborn, or if you're proud, you can't do any of these things. What, what's the link? Here, write it up here. Yeah. So here's a link, just tell me what it is. Okay. What the name? So this one. Yeah. I'm just gonna do one. Okay. So the top one. Ty slash apply. If you wanna apply by Friday, okay, no pressure on you. If you don't want it, this is not a high pressure sales tactic. I honestly uh, I've learned I don't care about anybody who doesn't care about me. So someone's like, Ty, I, I don't think it's gonna work for me. Well then good. Good riddance, dude. I do not care. People think that because I care about people and I do charity, I care about everybody. I do not care about everybody. And I highly suggest, one of the things I teach in money making uh, uh, relationships is never give a shit about anybody who doesn't give a shit about you. There's a little rule. Even You should read a great book called The Selfish Gene. It's one of the great books written. It's written by a scientist named Richard Dawkins who was considered at 2013, I think he's at Cambridge or Oxford professor, he's a genius. And you know what he said? He said, computer simulations have proven over and over, and psychologists, that the best approach to humans is called tit for tat. Tit for tat means you treat people as they treat you. Okay? So sometimes people are like, Ty, I don't really care about you, and I want you to care about me. And I'm like, I don't. I am exactly the opposite. So be hyper loyal to the people who are hyper loyal to you. What you do is you take all the energy that you're now spreading out trying to love everybody and you pull back and you give 100% love and energy to that small group of people who care about you. That's it. If you got family members that don't care about you, who cares? You think everybody gets a pass because they're blood related to you? If you have family members screwing you over, be like, you know what, we'll talk in five years. Shake their hand and walk out of that. 
Don't go to Thanksgiving. Who cares? You'll be make your own family. Family sucks sometimes. I have some good family and some shitty family. Who do you think I hang out with? The shitty family? You think you're going to change their mind? You think you're going to change shitty people into good people? Boy, you got lessons coming to you in life. You're going to go, you're going to look back. Number one thing, you're going to look back in 80 years old at your life and go, hmm, people don't change that much. That shitty person who ripped me off at age 18, they did it again at 28 and 38 and 48 and 58 and 68. Why didn't I learn faster? Well, remember, I told you this. So tylopez.com slash apply. If you are somebody who's not just a taker, but you want to be part of a movement that I'm trying to be part of myself, then you're welcome. If you're a cynical bitch, then be broke on your own, man. I don't give a shit about you. Seriously, that's my approach to people. I don't give a shit. I, if so, half the world disappeared, the world will be better off. So all you got to do is be in the half that's making the world a better place. So if you can't point out to me, if you can't point out to me how you contribute to society, then you better get on it, because what side of that stream are you on? You, you want to know what make the world a better place? You think the world's a better place because King Jong-un is here? No, the best thing that would ever happen on this planet is if Adolf Hitler wasn't born, Kim Jong-un wasn't born, a lot of people weren't born. So some people go, oh, that's mean, Ty. Well, Millionaire mentor tip for you. Welcome to the real world. This world is a real damn world. There's bad people in this world, and there's people that will cheat you in a second. There's people here that if you had a mil I have a friend. I was just in New York. My buddy had a guy who he basically needed, a, he had a bank account outside the US or something, and he had a friend sign for it because the friend lived in the other country. Okay, he said, will you sign for it? I need, an, I need a local person to sign. And the guy said, sure. And, he, and then the guy signed for it and took a million dollars from my friend and tried to tell, and then <laughs> went to court trying to say that my friend, that he was part of my friend's business. He never worked in my friend's business in one day of his life. He just signed a piece of paper as a favor for a friend, but when a million bucks was in there, and because he had he had was the co-signer on the account, he pulled a million bucks out. There are people who will cheat you the day you get a million dollars. Those people are better off if they were never born. So you might as well treat them like that right now. Seriously. And then you take everything that you right now are spreading out among too many people, and the person who has your back, did you send them a, a nice book gift this week? Did you send him a card? My question to you is why not? Why aren't you down more for the people who have your back? Take the top three people that you know if you lost all your money, if you were in the hospital, the three people would show up at your bedside. You know, I was dating a girl a while back and um, I, was out of, I was actually in San Diego or something. She was in LA and she got sick and she like she didn't know what it was, so she went into the emergency room and they held her for a day. I came, I came home early the next day and I went there and I was the only person who ever, and I, we hadn't even been dating that long. And I was the only one who showed up at the hospital. And I said to her, where are all your shitty friends? Her roommate didn't show up. She goes, oh no, no, they're good friends, they're just busy. No, they're not. Actions speak louder than words. So money making opportunities all around you. This is an opportunity. The cases are opportunity. This is an Uber. Somebody's going to make a third Uber. You got Uber and Lyft. There's always room for a third. Why haven't you made it already? Money making opportunities. What's your problem? Uber made is worth $68 billion. One guy started it, Travis, or I think he's the co-founder. He's the main shareholder. He raised seven to $12 billion and he's now worth, I mean, easy worth 10 billion bucks. Why don't you, now Lyft is on the rise and competing seriously. You don't think there's room for a third? There's a McDonald's, a Burger King, and a Wendy's, and a Taco Bell. There's 10 different fast food joints in the United States. You don't think there's room for more apps for different services? Why haven't you taken that money-making opportunity? That's a problem that I have with the world, you know? I ask myself, Ty, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you start it? I'm actually working potentially I'm testing a new idea to try to maybe compete with um, Uber. Opportunities.
opportunities. Where's yours? Okay? Now, money-making routines. Some of you just have a crappy routine. And until you change that, there's no hope for you. Remember what Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Whatever routine that you have done for the last 10 years of your life has gotten you what you have right now. Do you have a different routine lined up? If not, why not? Why not? Some people say, Todd, should I wake up early or should I wake up late? I ask them, well, what, what do you do right now? And they go, well, I wake up at 10. I said, are you making the money you want to make? Are you living the life you want to live? Are you happy? No. Well, then stop waking up at 10. Try 12 or try 8. Unless you're willing to experiment with the routine, be a mad scientist of your own life, be the general of your own army, no one can help you, but why are you still waking up at 10? Try extremes. Wake up at 4. I, I'll give you an example. Two years ago, 2015, I woke up. I, I read a book by Michael Milken, who was one of the original kind of investors in the United States. He created something called high yield bonds and so on. And he used to wake up at 345 every morning. And by five in the morning, he'd already worked for one hour. And I said, let me see if this works for me. So I woke up at 345 in the morning and I had my whole office. We had our first meeting at 415 in the morning at my office on Sunset Boulevard. And I did it for a month and it, I didn't make any more money. So I stopped doing it. It didn't work for me. So the definition of money making routine is one, a new one that you're not doing now because what you're doing now ain't making you what you want right now. So now I don't wake up at four in the morning. It didn't help me at all. In fact, I, for me, waking up later does better for me because I'm more of a night owl naturally. And so I think better at night. So if I wake up to, if I wake up at like eight in the morning, it doesn't work for me because then I'm tired too early before I really kick in. It's a weird thing. You can actually be tired and be a night owl. So uh, scientists, there's a lot of research out. There's a, I forget the book. There's a new book on the four types of people. There's like wolves, bears, and lions or some crap like that. A scientist came up with your natural sleeping pattern. So, but I, I'm not afraid to experiment with daily routine. People say, Ty, should I read a book a day? Should I listen to podcasts? You should do whatever is sustainable. So if you try to read a book a day and you can't stick to the routine, switch to a book a week. If you can't retain, do a book a week, switch to podcast a day. If you can't do podcast, like people act. We have in the most spoiled time in human history. Not even this generation, not even just, everybody blames the millennials. Dude, the baby boomers are a piece of shit too. Let's just be real. You think the baby boomers try to, the generation X, the, the last time a good generation was born was my grandma's generation. My grandma's 99, she was born in 1917. She was born during World War I, uh, 1918, sorry, she was born February 20th, 1918. Every generation since the 1950s, piece of shit. You think the baby boomers, they caused all the problems we're dealing with now. No foresight, no self-discipline, they, they're stupid. So this generation has all, there, there wasn't podcasts before, there wasn't live streams. When I was learning, I had to go travel to 40 countries to find mentors. You guys are getting it right through the damn camera and some of you still can't take the opportunity. You can dangle information, you can dangle golden nuggets in front of people now, right through their phone, no matter where they live, and they're still like, uh, uh what? Uh, I don't think that's, that must be a get rich quick scheme. Get rich quick scheme sounds better than what most people's schemes was. If I was broke again, I'd be buying every get rich quick scheme. Because what if one of them worked? You only need to get rich once. One of the best quotes Warren Buffett says, hey, you only got to get rich once. Mark Cuban was over at the house, the billionaire, you know, from Shark Tank. He told me, boy, you only, he said, you can fail 10 times, you get rich once? Everybody forgets the nine failures. That 10th one that makes you a millionaire or billionaire, that's all they care about. So for all the spoiled generation watching here, I'm assuming you're not born in 1918. I'm dangling golden nuggets. And I, if one person out of, We'll have at least 50 to 100,000 people watch this live right now. And then with replays and podcasts, we'll have a solid 500,000 people watch this. If one person realizes what I'm saying can apply to their life, I, I'm good. I did good.
I don't have to change everybody's life. I told you, I don't give a shit about most people, but I do look for the one in a million person because that's what my mentors did with, with me. They cared about the one in a million person, doesn't matter whether they're a male, female, old, young, black, white, no one gives a shit about that. For those of you worried about, oh, well, racism's real, sexism real. Yes, racism is real and sexism is real. So what you gonna do about it? The rate of change, people will be racist for a solid 100 years. Uh, the Civil War ended in 1865. Martin Luther King Jr. basically was able to get equal rights for black people in 1965. Actually, a little bit later. So you're right. Whatever's unfair now, in 100 years, it'll be better. So you're going to whine about it for 100 years to your grave? Nope. Just roll with the racism. Roll with the sexism. My last name's Lopez. Some people think I'm, I'm not even Mexican. Some people now with Donald Trump and all this, half the world mad at Mexicans. I probably get racism. Fuck them. I still make more money than them. Who laughed last? <laughs> Just remember who laughed last. You get the last laugh. So there is racism. There is generational poverty. My dad's from Harlem. My dad was in prison growing up. There's generational poverty. So what? That's like saying you're naturally fat so you can't go to the gym. No, just go to the gym more. For those of you who got naturally, you know, a weak body, nah, I got news for you. World ain't fair. Some people are born, you know, I had the five of the Golden State Warriors were here at my house. I did a pool party with Matt Barnes for cancer, his cancer charity on, on Saturday. It was actually on TMZ. I just saw it on TMZ. And, you know, James Harden came here. He's not a, he's from the Rockets and, and Draymond Green was here and JaVale McGee and, and uh, Matt Barnes and who else was here? Ian Clark and and then the next day I went and Kevin Durant was on my team. I played a celebrity flag football game and these guys are naturally seven foot tall. So it ain't fair. It's not fair that you and I weren't born. If you, if you and I were seven foot tall, there's a good chance you'd be making millions of dollars in the NBA. But who cares? What you gonna do about it? Wine, believe in reincarnation, you know, nothing. You just do with what you got and you go from there. No one has to be perfect. You just go, you know? All right, so the next thing, money-making routines. You better change it up. You better change up the routine because if it ain't working, you better try a new one. Don't be stubborn. Next thing, let's talk about money-making investments. Here's the basic deal of, and I'm talking specifically about money-making passive investments. Entrepreneurship, I consider active investing. Okay, you run your own business, you're reinvesting money back into that business, that's entrepreneurship. Let's talk about first uh, and foremost, let's talk about passive investments. As you start making money, how do you make your money work for you? Well, a couple of things. I'll just tell you this. Somebody, people are asking me about Bitcoin, people ask me about gold. There was uh, my buddy Dave, he's a multimillionaire. We were on a TV show a long time ago um, and we've been friends for about the last 10 years. And he argued with me about gold. He's like, gold is what you should invest in. I said, listen, gold's an arbitrary value. It goes up, it's not a, ca it's not a cash producing asset. And he goes, no, invest in gold. And then gold crashed. And he's like, hey Ty, you were right. So here's what I wanna tell you. For those of you thinking about things like gold or Bitcoin, they're highly volatile investments. So don't say I didn't tell you. That means highly volatile, if you don't know what that means, means they go way up and way down and way up and way down. If you catch it when it goes way up, it's like winning the lottery. But when you catch it on the way down, what happens to most lottery ticket purchasers? They get jack shit. It's a zero sum game. Be careful of playing zero sum game. If you don't know what the word zero sum game means, zero sum means whenever somebody gains, that means somebody lost. And it's very dangerous to play in those markets. So here's some things that I recommend for you. This is what I tell, you know, I'm friends with a lot of guys in the NBA. These are multimillionaires. They ask me for advice on financial stuff. I'm telling you the same thing that I tell them. Chris Paul was over here on Wednesday, uh, on Wednesday, Thursday, we played horse if you saw my Snapchat. And um, now Chris Paul is a very wealthy guy, very wealthy guy, but we talk about money sometimes. And this is, I tell this to everybody. You know, I'm not his personal advisor. He's got some genius advisors and stuff like that. But I'm telling you, this is the same stuff I say to everybody. Invest in assets that spin off cash. And just write that down if you got a notepad. Your passive investment should be in things that spin off cash, 
not things that you're playing the lottery with looking for capital appreciation. Capital appreciation is like, oh, I'm going to buy Apple stock at, at you know, 500 bucks and hope it goes up to 700 bucks. That's called capital appreciation. Okay? This is appreciation. It's not dividends. It's not earnings. It's not distributions. Make, you can do that if you want to play with your life savings in a very risky way. Feel free. Just when you get burned, because when you play with fire, you often get burned. Do not say I didn't tell you. Okay? Look for at, so what are some great as cash generating assets? A great one is real estate. So for example, buying a, a duplex, a triplex, a fourplex near you. In general, better than single family homes is better to buy like one, I, I'm looking at one in Pacific Beach in San Diego. It, it's four people. So it's one property and there's four doors, okay? And that one, it's safer. If one person doesn't pay the rent, they leave and you put another pe person in, you got three other sources of income. So real estate, multi-unit real estate. It can be apartments, it can be things like that. Now, if you're just starting out, you go, Ty, I don't got a lot of money for that. You can still get in real estate without much money. Lots of people have done it. Number two, um, businesses. Get equity, get shares in businesses that your friends are running. Tell your friends you'll be involved and you'll help them. You got a friend starting a business, especially if it's a business that's gonna be a cash producing one, like a service type business. Okay, I love it. They're less volatile. I don't like volatility. I will tell you this about money. It's better to make $100,000 consistently for the rest of your life than to make one million one year, zero the next, lose 400 grand the next, go up two million. If you don't believe me, ask Elon Musk. He made $100 million on the sale of PayPal. I've had three fascinating conversations one-on-one -on -one with Elon Musk. I can, I've talked to him, just me and him. And he's reiterated this. Volatility is nasty. And um, uh, Daniel Kahneman won a Nobel Prize and he did a fascinating study on human happiness. He said, under a brain scanner, they call it, there's different site types, CT scans, they, they put a device on your head, they can kind of, uh, they see which parts of your brains light up, the fear parts, your amygdala, your neocortex, your, you know, all these different parts of your brain that control different aspects of your personality, I mean, of your uh, emotions. And guess what? A person who goes from 100 grand a year and then the next year makes 150 grand, so they're going up is happier than somebody who makes a million bucks one year and then the next year only makes 900 grand because in their mind it's called contrast bias the relative difference they went backwards and humans are programmed to want to see progress most depression think about everything that's ever made you depressed it's almost always been regression going backwards versus progression almost always you were dating somebody and you thought it was going forward and they break up with you huge cause of of depression you lose a job that you thought you were making money and you are, so regression. So you want to avoid things that have high probabilities of regression. So you can invest in Bitcoin. It's okay to invest a little bit. You can invest in gold, but these things move up and down. They go progress and regress. And if you need the money and you have to liquidate when the market's down, you're going to take a loss and you're going to be butt hurt and you're going to be depressed. And I've seen people lose tremendous amounts of money, tremendous amounts of money, it's just like Vegas. Vegas is a town of suckers. I mean, for the most part, the, the odds are stacked against you. You should only go to Vegas to spend money that you don't care about. Some people are still stupid enough to go into Vegas. I know a few professional bettors that do okay. Um, they do sports betting, they do things, and they make you know 100 grand. And there's always the story of somebody who made 50 grand, but for every, uh, 50 million, but for everyone who made 50 million, there's people losing 300 million. How do you think they are able to afford those big shiny buildings. Steve Wynn's one of the richest people in the world. He start build the Bellagio and then he owns Wynn and Encore. Where do you think that money comes from? Suckers. So you gotta ask yourself, are you in the sucker game or are you the steady progression game? All right, let me post this. Give me one second, I'm gonna read. We're going back live on Instagram. What's up, Instagram? We're back. Vegas was built on suckers. If you ever want to get in the nightclub business, you ever want to be in the casino gambling business, let me tell you how to do it. Own the nightclub and own the casino. 
Alan Nation told me, Ty, if you're playing poker and after 30 minutes you don't know who the sucker in the room is, you're the sucker. Guess who the sucker in Las Vegas is right now? It's the people sitting around the tables. It's the people putting money into slot machines. They are literally, these casinos have a license to print money on the stupidity of other people. So when you look at passive investments, we're talking about millionaire mentor passive uh, investments, what my millionaire mentor taught me about passive investment, I want you to invest in things that spin off cash, even if they don't make you as much money as investing in volatile stuff that goes up and then gives you a heart attack the next day. All right, let's keep moving. By the way, tylopez.com slash apply. I'm doing a summary of the 12 to 14 items in the curriculum for the people that I mentor personally. For the first time ever, last Friday, I opened up a private uh, group and I said, I'll mentor you personally for the next 12 weeks. And uh, so you have until Friday. I opened the test group up for one week. Anybody who got in one week, you're in. There's an application. We reserve the right to remove people who are idiots because inevitably we're going to get some dumb people. Not IQ dumb, but just ignorant people. So if that's not you, and you ready to rock and roll, go to tylopez.com slash apply. You have ex under two days, or you have exactly two days left. It's at midnight Friday, California time. tylopez.com slash apply. Let's talk about money making relationships. One of the things my millionaire mentors taught me is that you gotta know how to read people because most people are exploitative. So let me give you a simple tool. Google the word dark triad test, the phrase dark triad test. Dark triad test. Everybody that you know, everybody that you spend time with, have them take the dark triad test. It was developed by extremely intelligent scientists, guys like Dr. David Buss, the founders of the Hexaco. These are Harvard level you know, professors. They wrote the textbook. This will show you three attributes and how high people score on three nasty attributes. One's called narcissism, one's called Machiavellianism, and one is called psychopathy. And here's the deal. You are going to be shocked because people in your family that you've trusted are going to come out as clinically bad people. There's another term for it. One scientist called it, he created something called life, um, life, uh, what is it, life value, and it's called R factor and K factor. R factor are exploitative people who don't have long-term thinking, and then they have something called K factor. K factor is what you want. You want a high K factor, low R factor, you want low dark triad scores in people. Some of you are currently about to set up a business partnership with somebody that I can predict with scientific accuracy have a 90% chance of screwing you over the second there's money in your bank account. I have seen it so often, but I've been fortunate because my mentors taught me this. I've had 13 business partners and I've never had a problem with 13 business partners, never had a penny stolen from me. Not because I'm smart, but because I understand, because I was trained in how to read people. Become a master of reading people, a master. Your skill from one to 10 needs to be an eight, nine, or a 10 in reading people. Not everybody will be a 10. You must become a master of reading people. So what are some attributes? Let me just give you some really practical stuff right now. Anybody that you text, and then they text you back and you don't answer right away and send you a high question mark, uh, send you a question mark, almost always is a bad person when I do the hexaco or dark triad test. They have high narcissism. So let's say you're thinking of dating a girl or a guy, you know, whoever. So you send a text and you're like, do you want to have dinner tomorrow? And they write back, yes, what time? And you don't answer back for like two hours because you're busy. If they send you like triple question marks, Mark my words, they will score horribly on narcissism. Okay? Overly demanding people are usually crappy people. Overly demand, write that down. Anybody in your family who's overly demanding, you got a mom who expects way more than's reasonable from you at all times, and she's probably a bad person. And yes, your mom or your dad can be bad people. Let's just face it. I hope it's not. I hope nobody here has one. My mom's a good person. My dad, you know, my dad was in and out of prison. My dad didn't care. My dad had six kids. He didn't care about any of them. He didn't raise me. I had a single mom and then a stepdad. My dad didn't give a shit. So he had a high, my dad had a high R factor. 
He was exploitative. He cared about himself primarily. He cared about me. Like, he was never like, I hate you or something like that. But from age one to age 18, I probably never spent more than 10 hours with my dad. Maybe, you know, in like conversation. Maybe I was around him a little bit. But my dad had a high R factor and a low K factor. K factor means you exhibit a trait called reciprocal altruism. For those of you who want to be a little more intellectual, learn what reciprocal altruism means. It means you scratch their back, they scratch your back. You have people in your life right now who you do something for them and they don't do shit back for you. Cut them out of your life like they're cancer. The only real cure for cancer is to remove it. What happens if you don't remove a cancer? It grows. Chemotherapy is hitting cancer with massive radioactiv radioactivity. It's like a nuclear bomb on a small scale. Radioactivity. It's, it's not for the faint of heart. R factor and K factor. You've got to delineate in your life, in your business, in your money making campaign, that most people have high R factor and I think it's getting worse. I think that social media and other things are making people more and more narcissistic. That means they care and they cannot see things from your side of the story. Here's another quick practical test. Anybody who struggles with seeing things from your side of the story, okay, they can only see their side of the story. So they, they say to you, hey, how come you didn't do this for me? And you give them an explanation that's, that's rational, logical, and they still don't buy it, high narcissism. One of the traits of a high narcissistic uh, personality, highly nar narcissistic personality, is inability, literal, in their brain, the part of your brain that allows you to see other people's perspectives, it's gone. It doesn't operate. It's a faulty wiring in their brain. That's why I don't like politics. You ever watch political debates? It's two people arguing and not seeing and being willing to see the other side of the story. It's horrible. Now, for all of you that are narcissists, and you go, who cares? I like being a narcissist. I got something for you. I tell you what your punishment is. You want to know what the punishment for being narcissistic is? Because some people go, oh, I am what I am, Todd. You know, I'm going to Okay. You know why you don't want to go to hell? You know why you don't want to go to prison? It's not because you're locked up. It's because you're around shitty people. So narcissists attract narcissists like a freaking magnet. Those of you who go, I always date bad people. They're always awesome at the beginning, but then they screw me over. That means you're probably a narcissist. And so you attract the same thing. Now some people say, but Ty, are you, isn't that ironic? You, aren't you narcissistic? You have your face all over the internet. Maybe there's some truth to that. But I'm more of a businessman. My face is on the internet for one reason. I've done split tests where I market products without my face and I've done it with my face and my face wins. Mine's more of a logical reason. The day I find out that taking my face off the internet will be more productive, it's off. It's off. So yeah, maybe I'm narcissistic. I've done the dark triad score. I don't score super high in narcissism. I'm like middle. So I, I'm certainly no saint. I don't even want to be a saint. The more perce people perceive me not as a saint, the happier I am. Because the more people try to see you as perfect, the more you disappoint them. So I don't, I don't want to disappoint anybody. That's why I'm telling, that's why I just start out some of these calls and go, half of you are too stupid to even listen. You should go off. It's not because I'm trying to be an asshole, but because, you know, better to be told the truth. Because some of you are ignorant, and maybe it'll snap you out of it. Maybe it won't. Okay, let's keep going. So money-making relationships, we talk about dark triad, have your friends take the dark triad test, the hexaco test, big five, those things. All right, next, let's talk about money-making lifestyle. What are the things that my millionaire mentors taught me? Maybe I can have to talk to you. Here's a couple things. As you start to make money, primarily spend your money on a few things. Number one, live in a nicer place. Why do I say that? Because science is in. Martin Seligman, uh, there's a guy named Jonathan Haidt wrote a great book called The Happiness Hypothesis. They literally tested people with machines, with scientifically you know, calibrated machines, and they found that if you live in the wrong place, in a loud area of town, with high crime, with things like this, that it literally raises your cortisol level, which is, a, cortisol is like the stress hormone. So what you don't want to do, I've seen people make money 
and then not spend it on a nicer place to live. They go, I'm going to save all the money. I'm going to reinvest it in my business. No, you need to plan for the future, but you also need to make the present as good as you can, as, you know, as uh, hospitable as you can. And so the first thing I recommend as you make money is not buying Lamborghinis, not buying Ferraris, okay? It's upgrading where you live. It's not upgrade, because a lot of people when they make money, they upgrade their shoes first. Now you see I got all Yeezys and all that kind of stuff, but that's not the first thing I did with my money. So lifestyle, start with housing, okay? Number two, expand traveling. And here's why, both the frequency and the distance. Both the frequency and the distance. Number three, and maybe you could switch this order. Let me have some, can I have some? Is that for me? Here, bring it here, yeah. Upgrade food. Oh, that's yours? Look at Kate, she got way too much spray tan. <laughs> <laughs> Kate. Oh. Do you want that? Or yeah, I'll have turkey? this. It's good. No, let me have this one. This. Okay. Pour that out, though. Okay. I'm gonna eat while I do this. You want it on top? If of somebody it? doesn't like it, please change the channel. <laughs> Smart people change the channel. Dumb people write comments. Um, okay. Not dumb people write comments, but dumb people go, "Why are you eating?" Just change the channel, dude. What's this? Is that the one water or special one? No, okay. Okay, so then once you do the three, once you've expanded where you live into a nicer place, doesn't have to be a mansion or anything. Nicer part of town, quieter, quieter. Let me repeat the word, quieter. So if you have a choice between a big house in a loud area, you're making a mistake. Quiet. The more money you make, the more people are going to try to knock on your door and ask you for money. Quiet is what you want. Okay. Hey, can you bring a, can you tell her to bring a fork? Okay. Uh, when it comes to travel, here's what I recommend. Two approaches. For those of you overly analytical people who overthink so much that you never do anything, take a globe, close your eyes, spin it, and go to the closest country to where your finger lands. I don't care where it is. If it's Mauritius, if it's freaking Zanzibar, go. Because a life with no adventure is no life at all. People say, Ty, what's your life purpose? They interviewed me at this celebrity flag football game. The guy goes, what do you really live for? I said, well, big part of it's adventure. What do you think is better? Money, having being a millionaire and living a crappy life where you sit. I know people that are millionaires, but they got to work nine to five in a cubicle job, even though they own the company, they're just a slave to the work. Or somebody living like the Dos Equis man, life of adventure. I'm an adventure man. so. That's my advice. Spin the damn globe and go there in the next seven days. People say, oh, I can't. I don't know. Well, here's the deal. There's a great book. I forget what it's called. A guy just said, it was either a guy, I can't even remember. It's such a long time ago. But a guy or a girl was basically challenged and they took on a self challenge. They said, Anything they can say yes to for one year, legally, ethically, and financially, they would do. So like, their friends would be like, you wanna go salsa dancing Friday? Normally they were a shy person, they'd stay at home, they go, yes. Make yes your default. Make yes your freaking default with your lifestyle. I'll do anything once. Maya today said, Ty, in October, do you wanna go to Isaiah Thomas Jr.'s uh, charity event for the Boston Celtics? My default, is sure now i still want to look into the dates i might not be in boston yes cooper hefner the son of hugh hefner contacted me this week and he said do you want to come to the playboy mansion midsummer night's party i'll invite you i don't even know he he must follow he follows my twitter i guess default yes now here's the rule though you only got to do it once 
So you don't have to keep saying yes to salsa dancing if you go once and it's a piece of crap in your mind, you hate it, you know, I hate dancing, then you don't go. I'll say yes to anything once if it's legal, ethical, and financially feasible, and that you don't have a conflict on the date. Change your damn life. You'll get richer by traveling more, by meeting people that you wouldn't normally meet in your social circle. Joel Salton said, there's Ty, there's no change without a change of routine. That lifestyle of adventure, lifestyle of freaking adventure. By the way, where's my phone here? I want to say, I want to check here if anybody's applying for Millionaire Mentor. Let's see. I get an alert every time someone does. So I want to just shout out the people who do. Let's see. I will tell you. Joel Centeno. Right here. Congratulations, Joel Centeno. Lives in Quebec, uh, Quebec. He's Quebecois, Montreal, Quebec. Congratulations. He went to tylopez.com slash apply. Let's see who we got next. Oops. God. Some of these iPhones. I never put it on low battery mode. Then it always is closing out on you. No, it's not that. I just had it in the wrong mode. Mo Ismail, congratulations. Where does Mo live? Iowa. Congratulations, Mo. I'll just Austin Pritchard lives in Arizona. Congratulations. Alec Zavala, Alec with a K, Panama. Cool. Lauren Castillo. Oh, we got a girl here. Where, where is Lauren from? Lauren Castillo. Oh, there's a picture. She uploaded a picture. Illinois. So congratulations. I'm going to keep this open. TyLopez.com slash apply. If you want me to personally mentor you for the next 12 weeks, I just did the first call Tuesday. You missed it. Dude, people were like, that was the best call they've ever had. I had a small, I have a small test group. I'm not, it's not as big as this live and podcast where I'm going to have hundreds of thousands of people. Give me 12 weeks. I'll change your life. If you're optimistic, if you're an adventurer, if you ain't a crappy person, if you're a high dark triad, if you're a high R value person, do me a favor, disappear from my life and I'll disappear from yours. We'll do it, we'll do it an even thing. I have, at this point in my life, I have zero tolerance for crappy people because I've tolerated them before and they're just like cancer. They just grow and they affect more and more parts of your life till the next thing you know, it's like an octopus wrapped its tentacles around your whole damn life and messing it up. Some of you, biggest takeaway from this call is you're too loyal. Some of you are too loyal. Why would you be loyal? Let me, let me tell you a good story, true story. Alexander the Great, one of the greatest conquerors of all time, is from Macedon, Macedonia. And he went into one of his first battles. I think he was 19 years old. And he was fighting and the enemy, I think it was the Persians. The Persians realized there was the king, the king's son. His father was a guy named Philip of Macedon. And he came and they started attacking. So like 40 guys went towards him and were fighting to get to him. One guy got through and he took his, uh, he took his spear and hit uh, Alexander the Great and pinned it. It didn't go through the armor. So it didn't, it didn't cut him, but it pinned him. So he had him, and so that Alexander the Great couldn't go. And another guy came and was just about to uh, come right, they call it cleaving, where you just cleave with a huge sword and kill Alexander the Great right through his head. Boom, he would have been dead. And as the guy had his arms up, one of Alexander the Great's special forces, they called him his bodyguard, came and chop the enemy guy's arm off. True story. And saved Alexander the Great's life. And you know what Alexander the Great did? That man became that person who saved his life became one of became one of his closest friends. He promoted him to general and they were loyal to each other and conquered countries together. Okay? Who's the person in your life that has your back like that. Who is the person? 
Someone said, hi, Ty, Alexander the Great is Greek. Oh, Lord. Lord, help us. <clears throat> so you guys do know that the world geography has changed a little bit. But Alexander the Great, Alexander the Third of Macedon. You're an idiot. Please don't argue about stuff you don't know jack shit about. He was Macedonian, born Pella, Macedon, which at the time, remember the Greek Empire was bigger. He's Macedonian. The world's changed. Germany was not a country before the late 1800s. You lived in Pomerania, you lived in Prussia. It's, 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 yeah, anyway. Um, okay, what if we don't have someone like that? Good question. What if you don't have somebody who has your back? Well, vacate the friends you have and time to start hunting for new friends. Change your routine. You know, somebody said their friend who, who had their back died in April. Well, you gotta have more than one. You gotta have more than one. Wikipedia says Greece. No, it doesn't. <laughs> People are dumb. Uh, I told you there was an empire called the, it was the Greece was a big place. And then they had Macedonia. Um, there you go. We have all the people from Greece and Macedonia now piping in. Macedonia now became a country again. It's, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. We don't need to argue history. Ty, how would I make a good living at 15 years of age? By spotting money making opportunities. We talked about that. Money making opportunities. But, and that doesn't matter how old you are. This age thing got to stop. This is the first time in history where people under 25 are becoming billionaires. So please stop with the, I'm only 15, how do I make money? What does that have to do with anything? If you're selling on Amazon, if you're drop shipping on Amazon, do you think people research the age of the person who's shipping them the product? Do you do that? No, no one gives a shit. People go, oh, Ty, I, you know, I'm this, I'm that, I'm, I'm Latin, I'm black, I'm this, I'm old, I live in Russia. Who cares? Sell on Amazon. No one knows where you're from. No one cares. Just ship them the damn product that they buy in a timely manner, and you'll get high quality, you know, you'll get five-star rating, and more people will buy from you. Think anyone cares what you're selling on eBay, what you're drop shipping on Facebook, what you're selling on Alibaba? Do you think Alipay, you think anybody cares? Stop with the excuses. There's no need to be, you know, an excuse maker. Next, money-making entrepreneurship. So of all the topics, the real way that 99% of, of uh, self-created wealth, people who didn't inherit their money, it almost all comes from entrepreneurship. Very, very few people ever have a nine to five job and become extremely wealthy. In fact, none. There's not one person on the Forbes list of the 400 wealthiest people on. There's zero people who did it through a nine to five job. Zero. So entrepreneurship is important if you're trying to make extra amount of wealth. If you're happy with making, you know, between 50 and 500 grand a year, you can do that through a job and there's nothing wrong with that. And a lot of times it goes in phases. So you don't always have to be an entrepreneur. Steve Ballmer, I had dinner with uh, uh, two months ago. He's worth $32 billion. He helped Bill Gates start Microsoft. He was the CEO of the largest company in the world, Microsoft, for about 10 or 20 years. And he was a employee for some of that, you know? So it, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. At some point, if you wanna make large sums of money, the odds are basically much higher if you're an entrepreneur because you have unlimited upside. Write that word down, uh, that phrase down, unlimited upside. The reason I became an entrepreneur is because there was no limits. There's always a limit at a job. If you work in a job nine to five, I don't care if you're making 400 grand a year, you're not gonna make $3 million a year unless it's a commission-based job. So I'll talk about that for a second. For those of you who wanna be in a nine to five job, you need that right now. You need the, the, you need the comfort and the stability of a paycheck. Maybe you have kids or things like that. A commission-based job can be very advantageous because then you get the security of working for a company that, that, that has steady cash flow as opposed to starting a new business. But if you get the right kind of commission plan, there's no upside. And if I had a nine to five job, what I would do is go to the owner and say, I want you to cut my base salary, but I want you to give me a commission. So 
only if I make you more money than you're making today do you have to pay me more. That's what you tell them. You go, hey, cut my, cut my salary. Salary, you know, if you're making 50 grand a year or you're making 25 bucks an hour, say, look, pay me 15 bucks an hour, but I want a commission. I want a piece of the extra money directly attributed to the work that I do. Directly attributed. Okay? So that's a great way if you don't want to be an entrepreneur. For those of you who are willing to take some risk, because not all entrepreneurial ventures succeed, some entrepreneurial ventures that you start will fail. The average multimillionaire had three failed businesses, or two failed businesses, and the third one succeeded on average. Okay? So, um, for those of you okay with that, a lot of people are too butt hurt, too sensitive, too weak willed to handle that. You know, I was reading a quote by Mad Dog, one, he's an army general. And he's like, I love a brawl, man. He's like, I love a brawl. He went into Afghanistan and all that. He's like, these Taliban guys have been beating up women for not wearing veils. He's like, I'm ready to kick some ass. He's like, I got no empathy for them. I'm ready to blast some fools. If you have more of that personality type, you're probably a little more suited to be an entrepreneur. Because if you're not afraid of a brawl, of a fight, sometimes an entrepreneurial venture is a fight. You get in there and sometimes you get punched in the face and it ain't going so well. You know? And so if that's you and you're and you're not someone always butt hurt and always, oh Ty, I get people like starting business and like, wait, Ty, I didn't make a hundred grand the first month. If you're that person, if you don't understand how the game of life goes, that there will be obstacles, if you always have low what's called diligence, the second something gets tough, you disappear, stay in a nine to five job. Okay? If you stay awake at night all the time thinking about finances, if you have a high fear factor, high emotionality factor, you probably want to skip being an entrepreneur. But for those of you, probably about 20% of people here, who are like, I don't mind a, I don't mind a fight, I don't mind a brawl. Opportunities everywhere. Whiteboards, iPhone covers, this, the next Uber, food delivery business, start a gym that not only has a gym, how about this, how come nobody has a gym that has damn intellectual classes in it? I swear if I had more time, you start a gym and the, it's 70 bucks a month, whatever, you get all the regular gym, but also while you're doing your stupid soul cycle and everybody's listening to music at my damn gym, I got world class people training you on something, mentally. Why do you only want a six pack of your abs? You don't want a six pack of the mind? What do you think is more valuable in the long run for you? Six pack of your stomach? You know how many dumb asses have six packs of stomach but don't know shit about life? Yeah, how about I have a six pack here and a six pack there? Business opportunity, I just gave somebody a hundred million dollar business idea. You franchise a gym out, it could be called whatever, I don't know, you know, blah, blah, blah. Call it, uh, what's, what's that um, dodgeball one? Globo Jim, <laughs> like Ben Stiller. Money making opportunity, right there. How come nobody's done that? 7.5 billion people in this world. Nobody ever thought of that before? Somebody said 24 hour fitness. No, 24 hour fitness doesn't, you're not listening. 24 hour fitness doesn't tra train a six pack of the mind. Dude, I can come up with 100 ideas right now. People said black people can't get loans. Okay, well then don't get a loan if you're black. It's gonna be hard. If you think it's hard, then don't. I didn't get loans to start my businesses. I have before, but I've never started a business with a loan. So, the world's tough, baby. I ain't Twitter, you know? <laughs> people go to Twitter to, to whine and complain and get consoled by butt hurt other butt hurt people. I ain't Twitter. World's a tough ass place, baby. My dad was in prison. I remember wanting a dad growing up. I didn't get a dad. What do you want me to do about it right now? Go to grief therapy? Hold hands and sing kumbaya with other guys that didn't have a dad? Fuck that. Where's the mad dog? Where's the mad dog, tough people? Where's the Navy SEAL mindset, people? 
The world needs less. If we had more Navy SEAL people, we wouldn't have a problem with North Korea. His own people would have taken him out. That's what should happen. Adolf Hitler's time, his own people should have taken him out. One guy tried. Dietrich Bonhoeffer blew up a bomb to assassinate Hitler, but the bomb was misplaced, and it, it, it only hurt him. It didn't kill him. Where the hell were the rest of the Dietrich Bonhoeffers? Germany had 80 million people. I can say this because I'm 60% German. I did my DNA test. My grandma hates Germans, and she's the most, my grandma's 100% German, born in Berlin. She thinks Germans are cowards. Now, she was born in 1918, but she goes, what the hell's wrong with this whole country? No one stood up to Hitler? Fuck that. You get a dictator like that, take out your own problems. This Kim Jong-un guy causing problems for the whole world. So I'm going to take this dude out. We need tougher people in this world, okay? You got to be tough enough to take your life into your own hands and move forward. So if you're black, and your bank won't give you a loan. You got two choices. You can wait 100 years, because that's the approximate time that change takes in society, about 100 years, and then you'll be dead, and you can tell everybody, oh, well, I just couldn't start, or you can get rich now, or do your best, or die trying, you know? Let me take some more questions real quick. Time, a student from India doing bachelor degree, Oh man, these come through fast. Someone said, Ty, you're making that burrito look lit, lit as fuck. Well, burrito business. Man, I, here's a good business for you. Pick one simple product and sell it over and over. I got one for you. Bur burrito delivery. Here's why I like this idea. Number one, you deliver it to businesses. You say, you pick a flat price. People love flat prices. Five bucks. Three types of burritos only. No, two types. See, in and out Burger, one of the most profitable burger places in the world, they have like two or three choices. So you say, two types of burritos, vegan, non-vegan. You go you, and get your kitchen inspected. In most countries, you gotta, get your, uh, you gotta get your kitchen inspected by law. Okay, you get a kitchen inspected. It's not that expensive to do. Or you find you can rent space at a kitchen. You then cook on Monday a whole bunch of beans, this much, a whole bunch of ground beef, a whole bunch of stuff, and then you freeze them, okay? Now, just don't lie to people. Don't advertise that you're selling fresh burritos. Just say it's burritos. That, just tell people. I make them every Monday, and I will have them delivered to your office. You can order one to 100. If they got a lot of employees, you charge five bucks. Each burrito will cost you a damn dollar. Give them a group discount if they buy a lot. You get 10 businesses paying you for burritos, even if not every employee does it. You got one thing to cook. The more you buy beans in bulk, the cheaper it'll be, so your costs will go down. Money-making opportunities in that burrito right there. How come somebody doesn't have a burrito business? I've never heard of burrito delivery, but people love burritos, man. It's got all the stuff you want. Cheese, meat, <laughs> it's got uh, carbs. The things that you can put a little salt in it, you put some of your own, make some salsa, it costs nothing, and you mark it up. It doesn't even cost you a dollar per burrito, man. That's with delivery, you paying some dude or woman to deliver your shit. You pay Postmates, they'll do it for you. Anybody at 15 could do that. All you gotta do, like I said, in most countries, you'll have to have an inspected kitchen, or you can rent space in inspected kitchens. So you just rent it on a Monday, you can make 500 burritos. You can make 1,000 burritos easily. Hire two people to help you. People will, man, you said to roll them up. You could probably get a roller machine. If you were making 1,000 burritos, let's just go lower. Let's go lower. You were selling 150 burritos a week. You know how little that is? 150. In a week, in five days, that's 30 burritos a day, Monday through Friday, to office spaces. Guess what? What would your profit be? Well, if you sell them for five bucks, your gross would be 650 bucks. If your cost is 250, you're making 400 bucks a week. That's $1,600 a month on the side, and you, if you pay someone else to do it, you might not even have to do any work. Now, what happens if you 10X that? Definitely possible. 
$16,000. You get it going, and then you 10x it, and then you 10x it again. Somebody will take this idea and be making fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. Seriously. Somebody said, "Well, will this really work? Do people eat burritos? Is Chipotle a good business? You know how many people eat at Chipotle? What does Chipotle basically give you? A burrito. Money-making opportunities everywhere. Okay. Dude, I, I, someone Google how many burritos do Americans eat per year? Some countries don't even have Spanish food there. I went to Scandinavia, Sweden, they don't even have a Taco Bell there. The most popular new restaurants are these like little Mexican places because it's new. Bring ideas from other countries. What do you think made Mataschitz rich? There's a guy named Mataschitz. He basically started Red Bull. He got the idea from a, an Asian drink company and he brought it to Europe and then he brought it to America. He, he took the idea from somewhere else. Phil Knight, read the book Shoe, uh, Shoe Dog. What's the story of Nike, one of the biggest brands of all time? He found a company in Japan that was manufacturing a shoe and he brought it to America. That's the first Nikes. Okay? All right. Somebody asked, do you make a restaurant? No, restaurants are too hard to start because you got a lot of expenses. Deliver food. Nobody wants to go to restaurants. People. People want stuff delivered. Retail businesses, over 100 retail businesses are set to go bankrupt in the next 12 months. I just read that, I think in Harvard, uh, Harvard Business Review. Over 100 businesses, True Religion went bankrupt. Nasty Gal went bankrupt. American Imperial went bankrupt. Sears is about to go bankrupt. I mean, these countries, they, Sears I think already been bankrupt. J.C. Penney. People aren't shopping. They want it brought to them. Remember how I said we live in the weakest society ever? Well, there's one thing you can do. Weak society, give them what they want and they'll pay you for it. People, people don't want the inconvenience of going to Chipotle when you can bring them a, just as good of a burrito right to their office. People are late, look how fat people are. People don't even want to walk to their car. Bring them shit, really. So why would you start a restaurant? There we go, someone said Americans eat 300 million burritos a year. I don't know if that's right, but I possibly. Money-making opportunities, what's your excuse? I promise you it's this one thing. Your brain was improperly programmed just like my brain was. You must rewire your brain. Your current wiring of your brain will get you the results that you're getting right now. If you're making 50 grand a year, that's the wiring you have. And people go, I want more. No one cares what you want, it's what you're wired for. Nobody cares what you want. Someone said over 300 million burritos are consumed a, a month. I have no idea if that's true, but we can say there's a ton of burritos that are being, you know, manufactured, <laughs> eaten. This one says 310 million a month. Yeah, there's a ton. It's a huge market. One of you can become a millionaire from burritos. You could. Will you? Uh, as I told you, 50% of people are too ignorant. This is how it basically breaks down. About 50% of people are too ignorant. I'll draw a little graph here, because that won't turn. This is basically how opportunities go. 50% of people suck. How about that? They just do. They, they're low quality people. They got low. If you look at the character traits that make humans good or bad, it's there's 25 of them. It is a test called the Hexaco. It'll show you your 25 facets. So there's honesty, sincerity, greed avoidance, modesty, uh, fearfulness, anxiety, uh, dependence, sentimentality, social self-esteem, social boldness, sociability, liveliness. Uh, then you have X A agreeableness, which is uh, forgiveness, gentleness, patience, flexibility. Then you have the C conscientiousness, which is perfectionism, organization, diligence, prudence, and industriousness. And then you have the openness, experience, five factors. So those five factors are um, curiosity, uh, aesthetic appreciation, chair, uh, altruistic things. So that's basically, the, I just named 23 of them. I forget the last one. So 50% of people suck on that scale. They have low altruism, high, uh, low modesty, high insincerity, high anxiousness, high, low, depend, uh, low industriousness, low levels of prudence. So 50% of people off the table. 
Don't partner with them. Don't do shit with them. Don't talk to them. Let them be friends with each other. That's the best thing you can do. Okay? Now, then it splits. And by the way, this applies to lots of stuff. Family usually breaks out similar. Maybe you're lucky and you have a better one or whatever. Then you, it splits again. So now 50, 25, 25. Okay? Now, this 25 has potential, okay? But they're lazy and procrastinate. So there's people who would be loyal to you, but it takes too much energy. If you don't believe me, I got an instant test for you. Just text a little joke text, but don't tell them it's a joke. Just say, hey guys, I'm moving. Will you come help me move this Saturday? Just tell them that. Text 10 people that you know, family, friends, and acquaintances, and say, I need help moving at eight in the morning this Saturday. I can't afford a mover, would you mind helping me? Mark my words, out of 10 of those people, 50% suck, they won't even write you a text back. They'll pretend to ignore your text, okay? 25% will go, oh, and they'll want to help you, but they'll never show up because they're lazy and they're procrastinating. They'll send you a text last minute, oh my God, I was gonna help you, but then my dog got sick and I gotta take it to the vet and my friend, oh, I forgot about my appointment, I gotta do CrossFit, God, blah, blah. Blot, 25%. And then you got the 25% of people with potential. So out of every 20, uh, sorry, out of every 10 people that you text, you'll probably get two people that'll show up. That'll never change, that ratio. That'll never change. Family, text 10 of the people that you know. I mean, 10 of the people you're related to. It's gonna be the same thing. Five people aren't gonna write you back. Not when you ask for help because most people are exploitative. Exploitation basically means they will, th when they text you asking for your help if you don't show up, they'll flip the fuck out. You know somebody like that? Flip. I knew somebody, a funny story. When I first moved to Hollywood, I had a house over on Sunset. It had a pool in the middle. Uh, my friend, two friends were visiting. One was this Brazilian girl and one was my friend from Argentina. My friend had this camera. Um, that he had just bought, like a $5,000 expensive camera. And we were getting ready to go party. He was in a suit and she just joked around and she pushed him into a pool. And he held, luckily he didn't ruin the camera. He put the camera above his head and it was fine, but he was kind of pissed because he had to go and take a shower again and change his suit and all that. But he just played it off as a joke. He's like, ha ha, ha. okay, you got me. The next day, it's a true story, that same girl that had pushed my friend in the pool was sunbathing by the pool, just in a bikini, laying there, and he came behind the chair and flipped it into the pool, and she landed in the pool, all wet. And she freaked the hell out. I mean, she didn't talk to him for four years, basically, after that. You know why? Because she was an exploited person. She couldn't see, wait, she was like, my friend was like, wait, you did that to me yesterday, even worse. So I did it back to you and you're gonna flip out? Yes, that's how most people are. 50% of your friends, acquaintances, family members, business partners, when you need a favor, they're gonna not even write back or make an excuse. But God help you if they ask you for something and you don't write back. They'll be butt hurt through the roof. Oh, you're not a good friend. They'll gossip. Blah, blah, blah. Well, fuck them. You know what my answer to them is? Never talk to them again. Be like, listen, people take about five years to change. It's uh, August 8th, 2017. I gotta, well, let's go out to lunch in August 22. That's what I would say. August, 5th, August 8th, 2022, let, let, let's, hit, let's go to lunch. Post a picture of you succeeding on your Facebook. Just do it. Post a picture of you succeeding and showing you with something cool, a paycheck bonus that you got, a new car that you bought, something awesome that you spoiled yourself. Post it on your personal Facebook. Mark my words, some people are going to write, oh, well look who's got a big head, oh look who has an ego, oh look. That means they're taking it personally that you're succeeding. I call that smoking out the haters. It's like tear gas. Now you know everybody on Facebook who's a piece of crap, who is over here. Look at comments. Comments will reveal to you everything you need to know about planet Earth right now. 
See, in the past, a hundred years ago, horrible people were mostly no, had no friends and lived in their mother's basement. But now, because of the internet, the people in the basement can connect to everyone else. So every virgin 24-year-old guy that no girl likes is sitting there pounding away on celebrities' comments, Justin Bieber, oh, you're a piece of crap, and da, da, da. I mean, God, how do we cut the damn internet to at least half of the world? I know that Mark Zuckerberg is on a global mission to bring more people connected to the internet. I'm like, how about an application for the internet? If you have the ignorance factor of 10 trillion, you are forever banned. You know what else will make the world a better place? You can't have kids till you go through a training program and prove you're not a piece of crap because piece of crap parents produce piece of crap kids. Look at Kim Jong-un. His father was a piece of shit and so was he. And then it goes on and on and on. Where's the damn, people want regulations on all kinds of stuff. I'm like, you don't even regulate the right thing. Why not regulate parenthood? You gotta, to drive a car, you have to pass a test. What's more dangerous? An idiot driving a car or an idiot having six kids that you and I are gonna have to pick up the burden for, for the education system and their health care because they're gonna be crappy people for the next 80 years. Oh, but no regulations there? Oh, internet. One person can go in, hack in, and disrupt the happiness of a thousand people. No regulation there? Give me a break. People are like, you wanna be president? I'm like, no, I'd be king, but not president. Fuck being president. Then you gotta listen. Then all the horrible people who tweet the most write the most damn things. I feel sorry for Obama, Trump, all. Why would you wanna be the president? <laughs> you, now, like voters are like your bosses. We know out of 330 million people in America, 165 million suck. So you gotta have 165 million people be able to access your Twitter and write letters to the president. Oh my God. I was, I had lunch with um, Adam Silver. He's the commissioner of the NBA, the National Basketball Association. He's the most powerful guy in sports. He was voted. Okay. So he told me people call up the NBA office. It's on, um, it's in uptown New York, Manhattan. I, if you're on my Snapchat, you saw I walked to it. It's like on Madison or something. I don't know. It's by this big church. It's, it's near Central Park. And I go up there and I'm like, it's pretty cool because I love basketball. And I'm like meeting, you know, the Adam Silver, powerful guy. So we're just sitting down and, and while I was waiting, the secretary was like, Ty, I'm in your 67 steps. This pretty woman, boy, they had a pretty secretary. All my, Zach was with me, Rome was with me. I was like, who the hell is that? This Puerto Rican uh, woman, she was probably about 30 years old, 28 years old, really nice. And she goes, I was like, what are you, because the phone was ringing, and I was like, who calls? And she's like, all throughout the season, people call up the NBA headquarters. I don't know how they get the phone number. They call up and complain about the refs. And I'm going, are you the dumbest person on the planet? I, I, I got to meet the person who literally thinks they can call the NBA because their team is losing and complain She's like, I just put them through to a voicemail that we don't listen to. So people are there leaving 15 minute voicemails. That's like what it's like to be the president. That's what it's like to be the president. You gotta listen to people that don't know anything about politics. They don't understand geopolitical. They can't even balance their own paycheck and they're talking about your economic policies. That's all you gotta say. This would be a rule. Oh, you wanna talk about economic policies? Dude, your Bank of America account has overdraft fees right now. You, you're gonna tell Donald Trump or Obama how to manage night, an $18 trillion GDP? Who the fuck are you? Can we trace these phone calls using, uh, what's the, the, Julian Assange and all these WikiLeaks guy? This is, this is my plan, okay? This is my plan. I'm getting off to topic, but I like this topic. And this is a free call, so I'm going to give a shit if you're satisfied or not. For those of you in my paid program, I'll make sure you're satisfied. This one, I don't care because you, know, you get what you pay for. So um, this is just me, like, uh, venting. So <laughs> my plan is here's how you make America great again. You know, make America great again, this, this big 
slogan that got Donald Trump. I, I'm all for that. I, I, I'm a patriot. I like America. You know, I don't think America's perfect, but it's a pretty good damn place to live. I, I can't think of a better place to live overall, okay? Especially California. I love California. Um, everybody who hates America, who protests, and every crappy person in America, we send them to France. Because France always looks down on America and thinks they're so much better than us. So we just send them all the crappy people. And uh, just so you know, this sounds crazy, but do you know how Cuba cleaned up its act? In the early 1980s, if you've seen the movie Scarface, it's a true story. Fidel Castro took all the crazy criminals, every one of them out of prison, and put them on boats and sent them to Miami. And guess what happened in Miami? Crime went through the roof and crime dropped in Cuba. So it shouldn't really, I, you know, the whole thing about building a wall and this and whatever. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. I don't want to speak. But great. We want to keep bad people out of America. But what about the good people who are already citizens? How the hell do we get rid of them? One thing we could do, this is how I think you do it. You pay them. So you just say, listen, we'll give you 50 grand and a ticket to live in France and we buy your passport and you renounce your citizenship. That will be the greatest thing because then you're not forcing anyone out so it's not unethical. It's 50 grand and they're gone. And trust me, those people are costing America more than 50 grand. Then every passport of crappy person that's out, you would open up their spot to a good person somewhere in the world who wants to move to America. France, all these countries that look down on America, good. We'll send you all the people that we can't stand and see how your country goes. So I, I don't like countries that look down on America. I see that sometimes. Even though I do think it's okay to criticize countries, but they over, America is a big country, so we're the big target. Everything's bad. Ah, oh, bullshit. America's like, everything's bad in American healthcare. Is it really? You've been to Canada? Nine months to, to see a medical doctor? Move to Canada then. You'll be, you'll be coming right across the border in Detroit when you need to see a physician. People are dying because they can't get through. So please, America's not perfect. America has a lot of stupid stuff, um, but America is not evil. And France isn't evil, but French people are annoying. They truly are. They're the most annoying people I've ever met. My, sorry, French people, but I just gotta tell you the truth. Although my first love, the first girl I loved was French. So French women, I've had a better experience with French guys are like Machiavellian, annoying ass people. Not all of them, but most of them that I've ever met. I'm sure this is very politically uh, correct what I'm saying. <laughs> Sometimes people are like, Ty, I, I Google you and I see negative things about you. I'm like, yeah, because I speak the truth like this. How do you think this works for people? French people probably be in every Reddit forum. Who is this guy? <laughs> He's talking shit about France. France, we've had to save your ass. There is one great thing about France. They saved America in 1776. So we do owe them a great, so 200 years ago, you guys were awesome to us. Ever since there, we've been bailing your ass out of wars. You lost World War I instantly, World War II instantly, and now we saved you. And now this Macron guy thinks he's so much greater than Donald Trump. I loved when, when Donald Trump, I, I'm not a big Donald Trump, I'm not a hater or a fan, I love when Donald Trump pulled Macron off, or off balance. He was like, welcome to America, bitch. Blank. Pulled the guy off. Uh, that was funny. Okay. Um, yes. France has great pancakes, though. <laughs> Fran French food is amazing. French has great style. They got great architecture. They got this. But, yeah. They also got 25% unemployment. So that's why everybody's killing everybody there. Ty, France has a six-month limit, so all the stupid people will return. Ty Lopez is an OG. America is evil, though. All right, we got our first candidate. What is your name? Where do you live? We'll buy your passport for 50 grand. You can live anywhere. North Korea. I'll pay you 100 grand to go to North Korea. Go try to assassinate uh, Kim Jong-un for us. You know, do a, why isn't anybody blowing themselves up with backpacks around that guy? People always, I don't understand terrorists. Terrorists are blowing up innocent people. Kids. Kid don't have shit to do with anything. Where's the damn ISIS guy that goes to North Korea? You think North Korea is Muslim? No. Blow them up too. Uh, 
What if we did that? We emptied Guantanamo Bay and we said, if you go, if you successfully kill Kim Jong Un, we'll take this ankle break bracelet off. Just do the do the Mark Cuban thing. I mean, do the uh, Cuba Fidel Castro thing. Dump all of uh, the suspected terrorists in North Korea and anybody who does who eradicates our problem. You know, somebody said that's a terrible idea. Yeah, I'm just speaking my ass. Okay, let's get back to making money. Someone's saying, oh, I beat you to it. But, by the way, one of the things that I'm talking like this, because I want you to understand that you got to be able to think alternative thoughts. The way I think about life is shit you ain't heard before, right? Is anybody saying this in the media? No. So you got to learn that you got to find a different set of people to learn from. The things I talked about with money, you're not going to learn it in college. Some people are like, Ty, I'm not going to pay $1,000 to be one of your classes. Well, then take the 1000 bucks and go to community college and call me in 10 years when you're broke. You think you're going to learn shit in community college? People are paying 1000 bucks per quarter in community colleges. You know why they're community colleges? It's because the professors weren't good enough to be at real colleges. So why you want to go learn from the subpar people? I understand why people want to go to Harvard. I get it. You go to Harvard, you get the world expert, the world top economist teaching your class, the top psychiatry, you get I mean, a psychology professor, but you people do, doling out money, why not take that $1,000 and start a business? Then you can go to community college for the rest of your life. You know? Somebody said, Ty, but I learned a lot in community college. Yeah, but you don't know what you didn't learn. It's not what you know that you know that helps you. It's not what you don't know that it's not what you uh, know you don't know that helps you. It's the unknowns unknowns. How do you know they treated you well? How do you know they taught you well? How's your income look? Armando. How's your income since you went to community? Let's just real talk here. People lie. This is one of my favorite sayings I ever came up with. People lie, but numbers don't. So Armando, could we see your tax return before and after you went to your community college. I want to see, was there, you invested time, energy, and money in your community college. Was it worth it? Because you lie, because people lie. But show me the numbers, then I'll believe you. Numbers tell the truth, boy. That's why I said, you text your 10 friends that you need help this Saturday, five of them, that's a number. Now you know five of them. Don't matter what they say, oh, I couldn't make it, da-da-da-da, you know? So... Yeah. Okay. Ty. I dro someone said they dropped out of high school and made 500 grand a year. JC69 New York. Cool. I don't always recommend dropping out of high school. I did go to high school. I don't even recommend dropping out of college. What I do is I recommend that you have the mindset that you don't just buy into something just because everybody does it. Just because your friend goes to community college doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Life has to be customized. You know, for some people, going to college is going to be the best choice of their life. For most people, it's going to be a waste of time. You can get your art history degree and your philosophy degree. I mean, I had a member of my family. I won't say who. But just, let me just run this by. He spent four years and 80 grand in debt to go to college to learn Spanish. I said, wait a second. Let's do an alternative reality. You could have traveled to Spain or Argentina or Puerto Rico or Colombia. You could have learned fluent Spanish from native speakers, gotten a job in that country, gotten paid, lived in an awesome country. You could have lived in all those countries three months each. But instead, you went to some school and you can't speak Spanish now because you didn't learn it from native speakers. You weren't immersed in the society that speaks Spanish. Why would you skip 80 grand in debt? That's stupid. I know people got an art history degree. You know how you get an art history degree in real life? Go travel to Egypt. Go travel to Greece. Go travel to ancient, uh, you know, go to Machu Picchu in Peru. Then you see it firsthand. Why you want to learn it out of a textbook when a professor lecturing you on those subjects? Yeah, we can do that maybe. Okay. So, for some people, college is a genius idea. For many, it's an idiotic idea. I'm going to reset this Instagram here. I 
I, I got to talk to Instagram. Please explain to me the logic that you can only do one hour live Instagrams, but then the second it's over, you can reset it and turn it on. I'm going, that, that, I could understand if they're trying to save money on bandwidth, but then they should restrict it that you can't immediately go live again. There's so many opportunities. Let me just tell you this. The fact that 50% of the world sucks means there's a huge vacuum of opportunities because if everybody was, had potential, so 25% of people are lazy, procrastinate. 50% of people don't have anything to the, their airheads. That means you're only competing with 25% of the world. But guess what? All these people got to buy food. They got to buy products so you can sell to them. You know, iPhone, it's a smart device built by Apple, which is in this category, but they don't, you know, idiots buy it too. So you can make money from 100% of the human population, but you only have to compete with maybe 25% of it. That's why there's never been a time to make more money, but you need to rewire your brain. These talks I do, these podcasts I do, my social media, you know, some of it's me just doing my life, but some of it is I want to pass on the reprogramming that I got. You know, I learned from people that were think outside of the box to the hundredth degree. If you think my ideas are crazy, my mentor Joel Salatin was thinking out of the box 100 times more than I am. My idea about sending people to France, he already thought of that and has a 10 time better, more crazy idea that would actually work. Start thinking out of the box. The status quo, what did Thoreau say? The mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What's called resignation is confirmed desperation. So let's talk about this for a second. If you're under financial pressure, who here is under tremendous financial pressure at this juncture in your life? It can come from many things. It can come from systemic poverty. You grew up in it. You didn't know better. It can come from bad choices. Uh, it can come from changes in economy. It can come from things outside of your control and things uh, within your control. Let's talk about this to kind of wrap up. I'm not even sure what time it is. What time is it? What time did I start? Oh, so this is two hours. Okay. Well, let me just say this because a few of you are going to have to go. You have 48 hours if you want me to personally mentor you for the next 12 weeks. I've never offered this before, ever. I've been asked this since 2013. I've always said no, but I decided to take a small test group of people, personally mentor you. We talk on the phone every Tuesday, a small group. I train you, and then I give you stuff to do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday. Homework, 15 minutes a day. Only 15 minutes a day. That's the maximum you're allowed to spend on it. On Tuesdays, we spend an hour and a half together on the phone. You can ask questions. It's in a small group setting. Okay? And then Tuesday, so I already did the first call on Tuesday. People were so blown away. They're like, this is the best thing that I've ever heard. It was more specific than this because here I'm talking to a wider audience. It wasn't, and I'm not taking you through a 12 week curriculum. 12 week curriculum that I created. Okay? If you don't think I got jack shit to teach you, please don't go. But I'll tell you this, I got you watching me. Anybody who has you watching them, you better uh, pay attention to how they did it, especially if you don't like them. Sometimes the people are like, Ty, I don't like you, but I watch you. I'm like, that shows me how much fucking smarter I am than you. Not to be vain, okay, because I'm not the smartest person in the world. Some of you are smarter than me on this call, and some of you are dumber. But it blows my mind that people don't realize, wait a sec, I'm wa that's why the Kardashians, they are laughing. Did you see that the youngest Kardashian, Kylie, Kylie, has made $400 selling makeup? All those shit talkers about the Kardashians is free PR. You know how expensive PR is? In Los Angeles, if you try to get a top per PR agency to, you pay them to give you viral press, it will cost you between twenty and two hundred thousand dollars a month. Okay, twenty two hundred thousand. Do you think that the Kardashians have a PR agency? No. All the people out there here that suck sit there and write on their own Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube about the Kardashians. Twenty five percent of people see that and go, "Hmm, what is that?" And go buy Kylie's lip gloss and Car Kim Kardashian's phone case and her download. And other people are poor, again, figure out why. And I'm like, because you're, you're making Kylie Jenner rich. 
over 400 million bucks in lipstick kits. She's 18, or maybe did she turn 19 now? So all of those of you who are critics, eternal critics, you go and you talk about other people. We love you. We thank you. And you should send us an invoice because I probably owe you money. There's Reddit threads about me. There's theories. But the, the viral videos where like people are making fun of my hair in my garage, they don't realize I encourage those. Encourage those. I got over one billion impressions. People are like, Despacito? Okay, that got three billion. But the Despacito guy didn't make any money from that YouTube shit. That goes to, that goes to Vivo. I got a billion impressions. I encourage it. Remember I told you about be thick skin? Go into the fray. Go into the battle, man. I don't care. People talk shit about me. Any of those people come in person, I will blast them, embarrass them on live call. I'm like, all you people who talk shit about me, come have a debate with me one-on-one. -on -one. You want to see? You want to have a battle of the wits? Good. I'll put in front of 300,000 people. I will bake your ass. I'll fucking deliver you back home to your mommy. But I want it. I crave it. I need it because I don't want to spend 20 grand. All the French people that are going to now get mad about me saying that French people are annoying as shit. French guys are, which they are in my experience. They're going to be writing all over French uh, French version of Reddit, this fucking Ty Lopez guy. And guess how much my bill will be in France? Zero. And guess how much viral press I'll get? It's the best thing that can ever happen to you. If you ain't got haters, you ain't popping. Millionaire mentor mindset. One of the things you'll learn is how to get thick skin, how to encourage it a little bit. One of my favorite stories, Shaquille O'Neal, the big basketball player, seven foot two, 300 pound guy. He, uh, first, one of his first years in the league, he played against a guy named Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem Olajuwon was an OG. He was from Africa. He, he was, uh, I think, from Nigeria. He played for the Houston Rockets. And Shaquille O'Neal was used to being able to bully people. Boy, he used to throw elbows when he played in college and high school. And he said, I'm seven foot two, 300 pounds. When I elbow somebody, people get scared. And he said he was playing basketball his first year against Hakeem Olajuwon and Hakeem, he came down and he threw an elbow and hit Hakeem Olajuwon right in the chest as hard as he could with his elbow. And he said Hakeem Olajuwon when they were running back after the play whispered in his ear go, ha ha, good one, try it again. He psyched out, he psyched out Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal never met somebody that tough. That's what you have to become. Some of you going to start a business? You go bankrupt? You call up the banks and be like, hey, you're going to foreclose on me now. You'll be, when I'm in Forbes, I'm going to write a fuck it. What's your name? Oh, Bob, you work at Bank of America? You about to close down on my business? You won't give me a second chance? I'm going to write a story about you one day. I'm going to embarrass your ass in front of all the people who read my Forbes article. Who cares? What are you afraid of? What you guys afraid of? Sometimes people go, oh, Tom, I'm afraid to start a business because what if I lose money? That's not the millionaire mentor mindset. I didn't teach you that. Shit, if I ain't losing money, I'm not experimenting enough. I want to every, I, I did some, um, I lost, I did an experiment this year and I lost, I've been losing, it was a specific experiment in another country and it's going to cost me in losses 17,000 times 12. So roughly 200 grand. And I'm excited. I'm going to lose 200 grand in that one venture, but I'll make tens of millions of dollars back. I don't give a shit. And I'm happy because if I'm not losing 17 grand over here a month in this new experiment, then I'm not experimenting enough. You want to get hit between the so I got to get hit between the chest and go, "Oh, you're losing 17 grand in this overseas experiment you were doing." And I'll be like, "Ha ha, good one." Throw something tougher at me. That ain't tough enough for me. 17 grand doesn't even phase me a month. Doesn't phase me. Some people here are like, well, what if I start a business and I lose $3,000? $3,000 phases you? You're in a poverty mindset. I feel bad for you. I grew up in that mindset. My mom said, Ty, 
When I was growing up, she never had more than 100 or 200 dollars to spend on Christmas. She goes, I save all year extra money to be able to buy you Christmas presents and I can save 200 bucks a year. She used to tell me, what do you want? And I would pick out the toys and it had to add up to, in one year, my mom could not save more than $20 a month. That's how tight bills were. So don't bullshit me and whine to me that your life's tough. Some of you might have a tougher life than me. There are some of you might be in countries where you're starving to death. You have it worse than me and some of you don't. I didn't inherit my money, okay? I'm not like Donald Trump. My dad wasn't super rich and I don't even fault Donald Trump. Donald Trump did good. I mean, his dad didn't give him that much money, but I didn't have that opportunity, you know? So my answer and question to you, my answer is toughness. My question is, what are you afraid of? Fear one thing and that's living a crappy life. Somebody said, no one's starving to death if they're live streaming on their phone. Eh, they might be live streaming on someone else. Let's see. Ty Lopez is a motivational speaker, not a businessman. Shit. You don't know shit. I just started a business, another business last month, uh, last year, October. It's already making a million bucks a month. I'm a fucking businessman, son. You know how many hours I put into that business so far? Under 30 in eight months and making a million dollars a month. What do you mean? I'm a smart businessman. I know how to make 10 times the money with a tenth of the work. Motivate, I'm not a motivational speaker. No, sir. No, I don't care enough about most people to want to motivate them. I do like motivating a small percentage of good people, but I'm a businessman, businessman. I, nah. I'm a businessman. All right, Ty, I wish Mentor Box. Yeah, that's the company. Mentor Box. This thing will be on the four, this will be on the ink list. I don't even put any work. I spend five minutes a day on that business. I got somebody else to run it. I own half of it. It's not bad, right? It's probably worth $50 million in eight months. So that's a businessman. You don't know what you're talking about. Now, there's some businessmen better than me. I told you I had dinner with Steve Ballmer and I was embarrassed. He's like, how much money do your businesses make? And I'm like, I can't even say it to this guy. This guy, if you're not making a billion dollars a month, you're like a chump. So I was like, so you know, there's always someone better than you. I don't think I'm the baddest ass businessman, but I am a businessman, you know? I am a businessman. I just don't, some businessmen talk, you know what? I more talk about my lifestyle so people think my life's all about Lamborghinis and Ferraris. I'm like, where do you think the Lamborghinis and Ferraris come from, man? Businesses, come on, man. <sighs> Ty, are we wrapping this up? I gotta go to bed. You guys can leave whenever you want. I just wanna say this. Like I said, oh, let's see who else is getting in. Let me congratulate some more people who actually take, I told you I'm down for the people who are down for me. The rest of the people, Faisal. Got in, Texas. I get a little list here you guys can see. I use Yahoo. I hate Yahoo Mail, so I use it to get alerts. Nicholas Gaspari, New Jersey. Congratulations, you, you were uh, applied for the Millionaire Mentor Program. Jesse Fabian, California. That's the first person in California that got in, my hometown. Timothy Driscoll, Maryland. Congratulations, welcome to the program. Greg Amos, congrats Greg. Where does Greg live? Oh, there's a pic, sometimes people send in their picture. They can attach it to their profile when they make a login, so that's kind of cool. Greg, where are you from? Missouri, misery. Chris Chumani, I think that's how I say it. Washington, not DC, Washington. Denise Joc Jocelyn, I like to see Females becoming entrepreneurs too. So not just men. Washington. What's the odds? We got two people from Washington at the same time. Christopher Cook. Oh no, that's the 67 steps. I have other programs too. Bronson Nishikita. Is that Asian name? That is it. Bronson and Nishikita. That's Jose Escobar. Oh, Pablo. 
You know El Chapo? New York. What's up, Jose Escobar? Monica Buenrostro. Oh, there's a picture. She's pretty. Doesn't matter. You don't have to be pretty to be in this, but someone would be a butt hurt that I said she's pretty. Nolvin Madrid sent in a picture. Congratulations. Where are you from? Florida. I thought this showed age. Jorge Gonzalez. Oh, no, that's for the social media program. We got different programs. I get alerts for all of them, but I'm just reading the ones. Pedro Lontop. There's a picture. Congratulations, Tennessee. Give me 12 weeks. I'll change your life. Ty, were you born rich? I'm just going to start telling. You know what I'm going to start doing? Just telling people. I'm gonna, I, one time I did a live stream. I was like, everything's rented. You know, this isn't even my real hair. This is a wig. Um, all Lamborghinis are actually plastic covers. I put them on top of a Honda Accord. And I'm actually broke. And, uh, but man, if I'm broke, I'm the most genius businessman of all time. I'm like the number one advertiser on YouTube in the world besides, you know, like Coca-Cola and the big brands. Number one in the world, but I'm broke. Shit. I should get an extra award for that, man. I got you saying my name. Uh, then I should, then I should do even more programs. How to, how to, how to, how to get 200 million people to follow you when you're an idiot, broke, and actually live in your mom's basement. For some of you, that would be a good ass course, boy, because that is a perfect description. Water, you talk about the best business, this is a business I'm getting into, water, clean damn water. Anything related to water is gonna be big. Desalinization techniques, purifying water, water bottle co uh, companies, vitamin infusion water. Right now, Coca-Cola will buy businesses for 10X gross revenue. 10x gross revenue, not 1x gross revenue, that's a normal multiple for sale. $10 million in revenue, you sell a company for 100 million. You know how little water you have? You gotta just get 7-Eleven to pick it up nationally and you got 10 million in sales. Uh, somebody said, Ty, are you worth 5 million? I saw that online. Shit. I, I started, I, here's my recommendation. If you can get an article online that says you make less money and are worth less than you actually are, you are a lucky man. The more money that people think you have, the more likely you're gonna get sued, the more likely you're gonna get gold diggers. Never tell people how much you make. If, you make a, if you're worth $100 million, write an article online that you're worth $5 million. Shit, you ain't never read The Art of War, Sun Tzu? The wise general? doesn't reveal all his strengths. What are you, a dumb general? You think a general meets, you think a smart general, Alexander the Great, would send a messenger to his other, to his enemy going, all right, I'm coming at you with 10,000 troops, 3,000 cavalry, you know, 5,000 regular infantry, and 2,000 bodyguard. You think he did that? No, you, 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 you make it look like you got 100 troops. Art of War, why don't you read that? It's a free book on iBooks. It was written 2,000 years ago, so it can't be copyrighted, trademarked. It can't really be sold. I mean, a physical copy, they, ha they can charge you because they have to print it, but, and they can write a foreword and stuff. But it's a free book. Why haven't you read it? It's the most read business book by top CEOs in the world. Why are not you not reading The Art of War? Making money is a little bit like war. It's a little bit like a chess game. You've got to be able to read moves ahead. You have to be able to sometimes do what's called a feint, where you go that way, but you actually go that way. Watch a UFC fight. You think uh, Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather, you think they're going to tell everybody their strategy? Hey, uh, Conor, I'm Floyd. This is what I'm going to do. Hey, uh, uh, Floyd, I'm Conor. No, nobody tells. Nobody tells. You see that Conor McGregor released a video, and he was punching the bag, but he was doing it real slow, and it looked like he sucked? And people were going, oh, he's going to get killed by Floyd. Do you think that's actually the only, you don't think Connor can box better than that? That's a trick. And half the world just went along with it. I saw the Twitter comments in the comments like, this dude 
can't box. Conor McGregor is, is going slow. I'm like, dude, the guy is tricking his enemy. Business is about taking down the losers, taking money, making profit. I mean, look, here's the thing about business. You can be nice and make money. What I like to do is ignore these people. I don't necessarily go to war with these people because going to war with idiots, they have nothing to lose. So that's why I said with your family or with your friends or with your business partner now with millionaire mentor relationship training that I learned, you don't necessarily aggressively attack them. Like if somebody leaves you a nasty comment on your Facebook, I don't necessarily, they're horrible people. Why are you going to try to negotiate with them? Don't negotiate with fools. You just cut them out. That's what I do. There's people on my phone that think that I'm still friends with them, but I know they're bad people. So if I tell them the truth that they're bad people, they'll flip out. So they're always like, hey, Ty, you want to go out to lunch? And I'm like, I'm busy right now, but I, let's do it soon. Or I'm traveling. And you don't want to lie to people, but I'm not going to level with every single fool in the world. Because every once in a while, a fool will pull out a gun and shoot you. Then it's game over and you lost. So basically, you fade away from people. You fade away. That's what I do. Okay? Somebody said, how do I know that the niche I'm doing is contributing toward the purpose of my life? So when you start a business, start a business around something you're curious. What are you curious about? Heli! Ando, hush! Why do we have them locked up? Why are they behind there? I mean, were you worried because we have the cables here? Yeah, oh, they'll be fine. They're not locked up. They're in a big quarter of an acre area. They can run around. But uh, Someone said, I'm liking this so much. Ando, hush. I got two German Shepherds. They're very protective. To start a business involving producing an item for a factory with a fa that needs a factory, always start businesses that take little startup capital. A guy on the first Millionaire Mentor call, which some of you already missed, so I said, you got till Friday, I don't want you missing more than one. Um, he said to me, Ty, uh, I want to start a coffee, a cafe, and it's a hundred grand to, for the lease and the equipment. Should I do it? I said, no. First, make sure you test the product out of your kitchen. Can you sell coffee delivered to people? First, make sure there's demand. So many people launch businesses, they haven't tested demand. So you need to test your demand before you go out and even get a factory to create a product, okay? Yes, Danny says you validate your business ideas. Actually, yes. Ty, why are you always around women? Well, I'm a straight man who's not married. That was one of the questions I get that I never quite understand. Tyler, like, why are you around a pretty girl? Well, okay, I guess I could be around the least attractive girl that I'm ever that I ever meet. But do you want to be around the person you find the least attractive? I never understood that. That's a whole line of thinking that's on the internet. That's like Ty pays Kate to be here and all this shit. <laughs> Kate, you should pay me. Anyway, but um, people always try to figure out the girl thing. You know what? I've, been, I've had, I, I don't know why. I've gotten a nightclub business in, more than 10 years ago. There was a lot of pretty women around there. Just by the nature of the business, you know? I had nightclubs in North Carolina, Parazaw, George's Garage, Spice Street, Red Room. I sold that business in 20, oh, I don't know, like 2010 or so to my best friend. And I started other business and I was like, I guess I just carried that habit over. You know, there's, I, I um, but not everybody around, all the women around me aren't beautiful in terms of like, not like I'm not friends, but I think it's normal to want to be around people you're attracted to. So whatever you're attracted to, go after it. It's a very common question. I, I, can't, I can't figure it out. But uh, as I told you, 50% of people can't think. So they, 
50% of the comments, it's been, it's been a great social experiment as each of you become more successful in your business ventures. You're gonna have exposure to more people and it's gonna shock you because some of you are like, Ty's pessimistic. You know, most of the world isn't like this and it's, it, I'm actually optimist. It's probably worse than this. It's probably like 1% is, has the potential to be badass and 80% suck and you know, the other 19% procrastinate. So, yeah. Um, yes, the hardest to, thing to do is think. Ty, what if you're young and you can't afford the millionaire mentor program, what do you do? Well, I got a free call, this is a free call. You do with what you got, but I'm gonna tell you this. People find money for things they really want. In my life, when I've had a definite concrete goal and I've set my mind towards it, I was actually talking to my CPA today because I'm working on two big real estate projects. Um, one is a farm in Virginia and one is a big piece of land in Los Angeles County. And um, they're expensive, man, they're big, big deals. These are not like $1 million deals. These are you know, eight figure deals. And I'm trying to do it all by myself without really having investors or anything like that. And so I'd, I said to my, one of my CPA, John, uh, one, I have a couple of CPAs who work for me, but this one is the, kind of the senior guy. I say, whenever I've set my mind upon something with a concrete goal and enough time to fulfill it, I'm able to pull it off. That was my life experience. It didn't matter what the amount of money. Um, a few years ago, I had to pay somebody back. I had, we had a business. It wasn't a loan, but it, it got complicated, and we weren't business partners yet. And they decided they wanted to do something else, and they're like, "Can you buy us out for 1.5? Ty, I want you to buy me out for 1.5 million bucks." And this is this is years ago, and at that point, that was a lot of money. I mean, 1.5 million, you know, it's a chunk of change, and. Um, I was like, okay, and I, I, we picked a date, and I set my goal, and I paid it off early. But if I hadn't had that goal, I would not have even, I guess I would have made less money is what I'm trying to say. So for some of you, when you see something that's out there, and it looks too expensive, the drive to get that thing will actually propel you to higher income. What gets you out of procrastination is ambition. And ambition is almost always centered around a specific goal. Remember that. What gets you away from fear and procrastination is ambition. And ambition comes from a goal. And it's usually a, a finite deadline dollar amount goal. So I'll give you an example. Um, if you just say like, I want to become a millionaire. It's not gonna get you what you want. Or if you say you wanna make six figures, it's not gonna get you what you want. You have to pick because you'll procrastinate. What you have to do is you have to do something like this. Let's say you're making 50 grand a year and you wanna make 100 grand a year. You have to say, you gotta be reasonable. Don't over, be overly optimistic. So don't say, I'm gonna double my income this month. It's possible, but it's rare, okay? Yes, you can find an article about someone who did it, but it's rare. And UNC coach Dean Smith, who coached Michael Jordan, he said he's heard the saying that it's better to dream for the stars because even if you only get halfway, you get to the moon. He's like, bullshit. Set a realistic goal, hit that goal, and then set a new higher goal. So what, what I would do, if you're making 50 and the goal, the vision is that you'll be making 100 grand a year, say, what's a realistic time frame? If you were advising somebody beside yourself, a younger brother, a younger sister, what would you say to him? Would you advise your younger brother who's making 50 grand and wants to make 100? Okay, set the goal that next week you'll have doubled your income. No, you wouldn't tell them that because you're gonna give them good advice. You'd say, let's set a goal 18 months from now, three years from now, two years, something like that. I'd say 18 months to three years is realistic to go from 50 to 100 grand, okay? And then you say, all right, let's divide it up. You're at 50, you gotta get to 150 in three years, 36 months, divide that uh, by the 50 grand increase in income you want. So what does that basically mean? That means you need to, in the next year, you need to go not from 50 to 100, you only need to go 50 to about hmm, 65, right? 65, 70. 
And then the year after that, you need to go from 65.70 to about, you know, 85. And then the last year, you make the jump from 85 to a little over 100 grand. And so that is extremely important that you think that way with your goals. And, and that's what creates hardcore motivation, which breaks procrastination. And it's that ambition. And what's even better is if you can pick a tangible item that's a little bit selfish. Not too much, not too selfish, okay? Not too selfish. Like you don't want it to be, um, you know, uh, I want to have a hundred grand a year so I can just freaking do blow and sleep with hookers or something like that. Because goals like that, they be, they're too edgy. You know, you need support of other people around your goals. If your goal is too edgy, you lose people, you lose allies. All, all um, smart generals have allies. Nobody wants to go to war by themselves. Every American war we've gone through, we've had allies, every successful one. Vietnam War, we didn't have any allies, and we didn't win. I mean, we kind of had, we had the, the one of the Vietnamese armies, you know, the non-communist one, the South. But we didn't do so well. We didn't have enough allies. World War II, we, we won. And we had England. We had France. We had Australia. We had New Zealand. We had Poland. We had Russia. We had, well, Sweden was neutral, but Norway. We had, we had the Dutch. We had, um, I believe Greece was an ally. Romania, I think, was one. They were attacked by Nazis. Even the Czech Republic, the Czech Republic was in Nazi hands, but they were anti-Nazi because, you know, they didn't like Hitler. So you got to ask yourself, do your goals have potential allies? And the way you get allies is having goals that aren't too extreme or too selfish. So it's okay to have a goal that you want a Lamborghini. But a better one would be like, I'm living in a little house with my family and I got kids and I want to get a place with double the square footage so my kids got a backyard. And of course, there's some selfishness to that. You know? There is some selfishness to that because you want to live in a nicer place yourself. But I like those goals that are aligned with other people. Is the goal of financial independence after college too extreme? Well, it depends. How much in debt did you get in college? How quickly after college? You know what I'm saying? Hey, uh, Mel, tell Kate to come here for one second. Is she in there? Okay. <clears throat> Where are we? Anyone? What's an advice that would give to your 20-year-old self? Man, if I could go, I'd just find more mentors. I know that I've said this over and over, and people want a different answer. They want some magical answer. Look, how would you become a better heart surgeon? You learn from a better heart surgeon. That's all. You want to be a badass mechanic? I got, ex I got the exact answer for you. Go find a badass mechanic who's 20 years ahead of you and what they know. You want to do real estate? Go find somebody that's 20 years ahead of you in real estate. What else? You, what's your other plan? Take a community college class? That, that's some people's plan. <laughs> some people are like, I want a job. So my plan is to get an art history degree from college. That don't get you. First of all, what job are you getting? Are there a tremendous amount of art history jobs? My friend, want, my, bro, my family member got a Spanish degree. What job did he want? I don't know. You, one of the seven habits of highly effective people, you have to have the end in mind. What's the end in mind for you? Have you thought about that? What's the end in mind? You have to have the end in mind at all times. Ty, how would you know if it's the right mentor? Well, here's the deal. Mentors are just like this. 50% of them that you think are good will turn out to not be good. So give yourself some time. Over time, the truth will come out. Todd, in the accelerator, ESK and SMMA, is a good idea to join Millionaire Mentor? I think so. This is a different, this is different. All those are good, 
this is where I, the only program that I'm personally mentoring you in live versus pre-recorded. TyLopez.com slash apply. Someone said, I want to become like Ty. <laughs> okay. I don't think, don't become like me, man. Become your own version of whatever the hell you want. Take, pick and choose from me. Some of the things that I talk about will be advantageous for you and some things won't. You know? A lot of people are looking for perfection in a mentor. I don't. Some of my mentors are bastards and some of them are saints. Doesn't mean I can't learn from them. Does your personal trainer have to be a, a freaking God who, who lives only for charity? No, your personal trainer could be an asshole, but if they're a good personal trainer on that specific subject, you can learn. Why don't you work with Mark in there? Because I'm going to come in there after to work out. Are you not allowed to sweat? Yeah, I can't sweat. Just do it without sweating. <laughs> but tell him to set up in there because I'm about to be done. I'll be in there. Here, come say hello in here. Look how dark Kate's face is. Wait. Dang, I look good. No, you don't. You look Thank like you, you look like you got attacked by a spray paint can. It's gonna rinse off and then I'll be nice and bronze. God. He's so insane. Oh my gosh, nipples. I'm sorry. Why do women <laughs> insist on fixing stuff that's not broken? Uh you called me pale the other day. Don't even try to play. I know, and I said go out in the sun. And get cancer. And get, no, if you go less than about 15, there's a cool app called D-Minder, built by a NASA scientist. It tells you exactly how many minutes to be in the sun that won't cause cancer. D-Minder, it's free. I don't make any money on it. you guys go download that app. I'm going to be nice and tan <laughs> by standing. I'm going to spray her with water. That shit's <laughs> no, going to run off. I still here, come no. here, Kate. <laughs> I still hey, have to Hey, where's dry. my water bottle? No, seriously, I'm, you're going to make me streak. <laughs> She's going to make me streak. I want to be nice and <laughs> oh. right, I'm going to go work out. Uh, oh, I should. You want to go in the pool? Let's do a pool party. No. no the pool's that'll, right here. That'll waste it. And I charged it on you. So. <laughs> Did you just get that on my. Don't get that. Don't touch me. You got. Kate has. No. This is a nice <laughs> shirt. Scotch and soda. I'm going to get scotch and soda tanning freaking salon on it. Oh, okay. I need to get out of this. All right, well, hurry up. Keep your tan to yourself, somebody said. Thank you. <laughs> uh, somebody said, I'm 17. Where should I smart start? 17, you start exact same place you start at 73. Remember, the only difference between being young and old from a business standpoint, is basically nothing. That's what I want to say. So, there you go. People are expecting a different answer. <laughs> Do you think if someone buys your product on Amazon or eBay or off a of Facebook ad that they research your age? Why, do, why are people asking about it? People go, what's the technique to make money as a woman versus a man? Uh, three steps. Three differences between making money as a woman and a man is, okay, there's none. I mean, there kind of is, like people will treat you a little differently, but the actual economic mechanics, I can't think of one. I, I, and I'm not saying that to be a jerk. I j I've been trying to think of one for years. What is different about, because it's like this. Because you're 17, you're not going to get a break. Nobody's going to go on. Let's say you're selling supplements on Amazon. Uh, turmeric, that's hot right now. This herb called turmeric, this spice is healthy for you. So people selling turmeric on Amazon. Okay, so let's say you're 17 and you put turmeric on Amazon. You buy the bottles for a dollar and you sell them for five bucks and you do good viral marketing. People come to your Amazon page and buy. Okay, nobody's gonna go, you know what? This kid's 17. I could get this turmeric for three bucks, but I'm gonna pay five bucks. No, they're going to get the cheapest one that's of the quality that they want. So you don't get a break positive. On the flip side, they do not say, well, wait a second. This looks like a good deal, a good product, good star ratings on Amazon. You know what? 
I'm about ready to buy, but I got to do a little research on the age of this kid. Or I got to do a little research. Is this a black woman? Is this an Asian man? Ooh, I don't know if I want to buy. Do you think anybody does that? No. They just buy based on the integrity of the product, the quality of the product, the quality of the marketing, the, how quickly it'll be shipped to them, and the price. So what you have to obsess over is how you win on those things. And that's all that matters when it comes to age. Okay? That's what matters with age, gender, sexism, racism, transphobia. I don't even know all the phrases anymore. Phobias, phobias, phobias. Okay? <clears throat> is there any way to work for you internationally? Right now I'm not really hiring. I got a lot of employees. I'm actually always looking to have less, less headache, but better, but better ones. But I have good ones now. What should you do now that you're out of high school and have five grand? Well, five grand in some ways is a little bit of money, and in other ways, five grand is a ton of money. So don't spend it too fast. How fast did you become wealthy? You know, I spent about seven years learning from mentors, not trying to make any money. So if you count those seven years, I had seven years where I wasn't really trying to make much money. I was just learning. After those seven years, it took about three years to really start to make like six figures, maybe a little less than that. So I consider those seven years was, you know, Seven years was somewhat of a training program. I don't know that I need that seven years. I would have needed the seven, but I enjoyed it and I was doing stuff. Someone said, Ty, make a millionaire in person. Done it before. Would you recommend investing in stocks? Yeah, but you gotta learn it. You lose a lot of money in stocks and you can make a lot of money. It's more about the educational level and the skill level. It's kind of like basketball. Can you make money with basketball? Uh, yeah. Can you not make money with basketball? Uh, yeah. What's the difference if you're good at basketball? Can you make money playing soccer? Yep. Can you not make any money playing soccer? Yep. So someone said, Ty, I learned stocks. It was a waste of time unless it's long run. Well, not really. You probably didn't learn very well. That's, that's not really true. There's people who make money in stocks. Depends, your, depends how much capital you start with. Depends how much risk you're willing to take. Some people, the stock market, the second it goes down, they sell. So they sell low and then they rebuy when it's high. That's the real problem, you know. Ty, do you make most of your money from affiliates? No. No, that's not a, that's not a large part of my income per year. Man, YouTube comments come in insanely fast. In regards to digital marketing, which industry would you say is currently the most profitable? Oh man, too many money making. Everything about there's too many money making opportunities. The issue is not finding one. The issue there is money in whiteboards and this in burrito. Everything that I put in front of you, this water, somebody would be rich. This business right here, this is I want to get equity in this company because I've been doing free marketing without even knowing it because I always post snaps of the. This company probably making, I have no idea, but I'm guessing they're making two to 10 million bucks. Some dude in Texas like got his mom's recipe and made this little bottle. I love these businesses. I swear I'm pissed that I didn't start this. It looks kind of cool. It's got a little picture. Shit, you could get anybody to draw that on Fiverr for five bucks, make this label for you. It's got a cool little seal and it tastes good, but all that's in it's habaneros, vinegar, Cayenne, pepper, Spanish paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, guar gum, salt. It has five calories per serving. Like, why haven't you made something like that? It's easy. You can make it in your kitchen. You can test it in the kitchen. Test it on your family till you find the recipe that everybody likes. Somebody said, I, they're mad because they sold Facebook at $56 a share. You know what? 
here's the deal. Never worry about other people making money that you missed. It's always going to happen. There's always, you can't get every opportunity. Remember what Mark Cuban told me. You only got to get rich once. That's it. Then just don't lose the money. Who were my, my initial mentors? First was Joel Salatin. Second was Alan Nation. Third was Gary Townsend. Uh, a guy named Michael Murphy. Then I had a guy named Mike Stainback, Al Howell, John DeWar. And that was the old school, my old school mentor. Since then, I've had a lot more. I got guys like Dr. David Buss. All the stuff I'm talking to you about psychology, that's from Dr. David Buss, who's pretty much the preeminent scientist on evolutionary psychology. So I'm continually cultivating relationships with mentors. You know, talk to whoever. And now, even when I meet people just one time, or just, you know, like, like um, Steve Ballmer, he's not a mentor in the sense that, he goes, oh, I'm, I'm helping Ty, but I met him multiple times and I make the, I try to get opportunities to talk to him. And so the conversations that I have with him get stored in the filing cabinet of my mind as a mentorship, even whether it's just a one hour dinner that I have with him. But a one hour dinner with a man who made $32 billion is usually a once in a lifetime opportunity. You know how few people have ever made $32 billion in the history of mankind? You know, like 20 people in the history of mankind, in the speed with which they made money. He's still relatively young. So one dinner with him, just me and him for an hour, that's infinite value to me. So you don't necessarily have to, uh, sometimes you have formal relationships with mentors, and sometimes you don't. Uh, okay, well, I'm about to wrap up. So let me just end, I'm gonna end here by just saying a couple things. One, I'm gonna do a quick contest, I've never tried this. I'm going to give 100 bucks to three people who share this video right now. So on Twitter, you can just retweet Twitter Live. On Facebook, you can uh, share by going to the Facebook app. I mean, your Facebook feed. And there, there should be a share button. Actually, sorry, right here, somewhere on Facebook. I don't know how to do it on Instagram, and I'm not sure YouTube has that feature, but I'm going to do it. Three people, I'm going to PayPal you 100 bucks. I want to see how this sharing virality goes. I've never done this before. So I'll do it in about five minutes. I'm gonna pick a winner. So just start pressing share. If you're on Instagram or YouTube, you can go over there. Somebody said, there you go. I just sent it to 50,000 people. Sweet. Well, keep sharing. I'll be checking. I can see who retweeted or on Facebook who pressed the share button. I will be picking somebody. About five minutes. All right. Someone said they sent to 18,000 people on Twitter. Cool. Thank you for the long session, Ty. Good. Someone said, damn it, I can't do it on Instagram. Always be experimenting. A little millionaire mentor tip for you guys today. Another one. You should be testing at least 17 things per day if you can. Anything. 17 different things. It can be little tests. If you usually wake up at 8 in the morning, test waking up at 7.45 in the morning. If you usually don't wear a suit to work, there's experiment number two. Wear a suit. If you usually use Tinder to find dates, try Bumble or try meeting somebody at a coffee shop. If, you know, one of my business partners is this guy. He's kind of a nerdy guy. Makes tr his company, first company ever, just passed a billion dollars in revenue. He's a very smart guy. And um, he always would wear these old Jordans. You, you probably saw this on my uh, Snapchat. And when we were out in New York City at my place, I got a place in Soho that I live once in a while. I go out there in New York when I can handle the craziness of New York. And we went to a place called Flight Club. Flight Club is a shoe store. And um, he always been wearing these Jordan Zeros, I call them, because they're the worst Jordans I've ever seen. And I made him buy some nice ones. They're called, they're, um, well, which ones did he get? Well, I made him buy some Yeezy, uh, which ones did we get? Forget what, turtle doves or something like that. And he bought some nice shoes. And he's like, Ty, I don't want to spend a thousand bucks on this. And I'm like, trust me, you got to dress to impress sometimes. And people notice what you're wearing. So today he what's at me, he's like, dude, you can't believe how many people complimented me on the shoes and it's opened doors of conversation and business networking and this little stuff like that. So I said, his name's Alex. I'm like, Alex, you got to experiment more, man. 
So a lot of you are just so closed-minded, so afraid, so fearful, so overly sensitive that you just, you don't have that mentality. I'm like, let me experiment with everything, you know? That's what I'm doing. You see an experiment right here. Let's see what happens if I say three people get 100 bucks if they share it. What if I get 100,000 people to see it for $300? It's a good damn deal, right? Why haven't you thought of that? Seriously, people are like, oh, Ty is using money to get Instagram followers. No shit I am. Why aren't you? You think there's some unethical thing? <laughs> you don't know shit about business. That's like saying Coca-Cola cheated because they have advertisements to get more people to buy their drinks. No, they're just smart. Are you smart? That's my question. All that really matters is are you smart? And everyone says yes, but let me ask you a question. People lie, but numbers don't. You smart? Show me your numbers. Show me something. What's the proof? Anything. A raise. Making more money than last year. A 401k account. A piece of real estate. Where's your, where's your numbers, man? You're smart? Where's your numbers? Show me something. People lie, but numbers don't. Show me your ROI on your investments for the last year. You know, you're happier. Show me the numbers. How do you prove you're happier? People become more delusional to become happier. So it talks cheap. You're a charitable person. How much money you give to charity? Oh, you don't want to say it. Oh, yeah, yeah I get it. People go, oh, I tell you, if you say how much you gave to charity, somehow uh, God is somehow doesn't count it. Mm. Okay, you are a fucking genius. So let me get this straight. Last year, I did a million-dollar match, one of the biggest charities in the world, Heifer.org. They help people and grow their own food in poor countries around the world. I publicly had to say that a million bucks I'll put out there, and for every dollar you put, I'll match. So we ended up actually raising $2.5 I have no idea how that happened because I just said I'd match a million, but I guess other people put in a million and a half, and then I said I'd match up to it. Did God not like that? Well, fuck it. I didn't do it for that. I did it for the poor people that didn't have food. So why don't more people brag about how much they give to charity? Oh, I know, because they don't really give jack shit to charity. That's the real reason. People lie and ask people. People act like, oh, I give to charity in secret. Bullshit, dude. You post in all the food you eat on Instagram. You post, you brag if you get sushi. I know you'd be bragging if you gave $10,000 to somebody, but you don't. Sometimes I give money to charity and I put it on my Instagram and people go, oh, well, you got all, you won't get your reward in heaven. Okay. I don't even know if I believe in heaven, but maybe I do. Maybe there is a heaven. I could be wrong. I don't know everything about the afterlife, but at least I help that person now and other people might be given more money because they saw and were inspired by it. I know why you don't share your numbers because you ain't got none. Let's just have real talk. People bullshit, boy. When a guy can bench 500 pounds, you don't think he'll tell anybody? When a dude's benching 500 pounds, you think he, he goes, oh, I won't get my reward in heaven if I share that I bench press 500 pounds. Hot bullshit. You can't bench the fucking bar. That's why you don't talk about it. That's why you're in the gym in secret. That's why you're going to the gym when no one's there because you don't want anyone to see you. Come on, guys. Let's have real talk. Real talk. For all of you that say you're smart, prove it. Albert Einstein came up with the E equals MC squared, which is the foundation of modern physics, which also was a big part of creating nuclear weapons, which ended World War II and killed 166,000 people, I think, in Nagasaki. So that basically means Einstein got numbers. He can be like, well, I'm smart enough to create a bomb that leveled a city. Now, that's not the greatest number to brag about. I don't think he was that happy about it, but it was a number. Martin Luther King Jr. had a number to share. He can be like, you know what? Because of me, you know, 100,000 kids now are able to drink out of water fountains with white people, black kids. That's a number. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi, he changed the world. He got numbers. He helped free, I think at the time it was 400 million people from British colonial rule. That's a number. What's your number if you're smart? I, 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 feel free to put it on these comments.
Where's your numbers? Real ones. So a lot of people love themselves too much. It's called narcissism. Love the truth, man. If you ain't giving money to charity, just own up to it and be like, you know what? I thought I was a good person, but when I looked at the numbers, I guess I ain't as good as I thought. So I'm going to get on that and fix that. What's up with everybody thinking that any attack on their current state is attack on them as a person? How do you know it's not molding you into something better? The world needs more people attacking people. You know? It's like stuff like fat shaming I see on Twitter. I don't think you should fat shame anybody. But you also can't lie and say to be 200 pounds overweight is beautiful. It's not. It will make you never be able to see your grandchildren. Because the odds of you living a healthy life decrease to almost nothing if you're morbidly obese. Why can't we just say that? That's not fat shaming. Fat shaming is making fun of somebody without the goal of improving. But constructive criticism is not shaming. You know, so all I'm saying to you is some of the stuff that I said to you guys might hit you behind the, right between the eyes, but it's not me shaming you. This is a constructive call. Why, why would I be on here if it wasn't constructive? It's free. I don't make any money. Do you think I want to harm the world? No. If I was that selfish, I'd just be living for myself right now. You know, none of you are prettier than Kate. Hey guys, I'm I back. could be spending time with Kate instead. But I'm also nice and helpful. You're not always nice. She's annoying sometimes. But she's she... just saying that, guys. Don't listen to him. All right. No, she is. <laughs> um. Anyway, so uh. But I'm annoying too. We're all annoying. Someone said, "Dude, we think alike so much." <laughs> Someone said, "Kate's hilarious." Kate, the baddest in the game. How much did you hire Kate for? I haven't hired her, should I? People are always like, you must. That's a good thing about Kate, she doesn't ask for money. When you guys start to make money, even for women, you're gonna get gold digger guys, you're gonna get gold digger girls. So I look for girls that don't ask for money, you know? You start getting a girl hanging out with you, asking you for money all the time, boy, you better run. You got yourself a hooky. Hooky hooker. There's a lot of them in LA too. But I try to run. You know, I do believe that you as a man, it's okay to be generous. So you can pick up the bill at the restaurant. You can surprise people with some nice clothes, but you don't want a girl that's asking you for money. You know what I'm saying? That's, uh, I'm not saying she's a gold digger. Tell me, said, Ty, I'm not sure why I'm watching this. Because it's damn entertaining. That's why. Why else would you be here? <laughs> I like to taunt people sometimes. Don't do it too much. Too crazy of a world. All right, I'm going to peace out here. Again, you got till Friday. TyLopez.com slash apply. Let's see if anyone else got in while I was doing this talk. My goal is to take 300 people from rags to riches. Oh, I got to pick these three people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm going to have to reset my stupid Instagram in their dumb one hour. <laughs> uh, Instagram, you're killing me. Hey, the world's so brand new. There's opportunities even at the top where they're doing stuff wrong, man. These big companies, just because they got a billion dollars, they still do stupid stuff. That means there's a hole in the market that you can fill. You might not be able to create the next Instagram or Facebook, but you don't need to. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't even own all 100% of Facebook. So if you own 100% of a smaller company, you still can have a lot of money. And the goal is not whoever dies with the most money. That's not a good goal. The goal who is whoever lives the baddest ass life. That's what you ask me. I know people make more money than me, but I wouldn't trade lives and they would trade for mine. Always ask yourself, would you trade for their life and would they trade for your life? If they trade for your life, then you're doing something right. If you would trade, the only people life that I would trade for, pro basketball players. I love basketball. Every time I hang out with my friends that play in the NBA, I'm like, damn it. That is the only people that make me jealous. I mean, nobody else makes me jealous. I, I know billionaires. I don't, I don't, I like Steve Ballmer, but I wouldn't want to be Steve Ballmer. I don't give a shit about software that much. 
So I wouldn't want to spend 30 years of my life running Microsoft. That would be, but for him, he won. See, he won his game. It's not my game to play, you know? So you got to pick your game. Oop, let me do this. This thing always. Was this two hours? Because that's what I want it to be for podcast. Yeah, I've been over two hours. What are we at? Two what? Three. We're at three hours? Damn. All right, we're going to pick these winners. Remember the exchange rule. I want you to win the exchange. Hold on one second. Damn, it is 930, isn't it? I told her, Mon. Where'd he go? But I got this done early. It's good. I'm trying to test. I'm testing longer podcasts. Remember how I said? Um, remember how I said 17 experiments? This is an experiment. I've never done really a three-hour webinar. I'm just like, if I'll do everything once, who wins the game of life? Not who has the most money, not who has the biggest company, not who has the most Lamborghinis, although it would be cool to die with a lot of Lamborghinis, I have to tell you. All you people who don't like Lamborghinis, I know why, because you ain't never driven one. Never driven one. Some people are like, what's the big deal with Lamborghinis and Rolls Royce? I'm like, people go, oh, you should drive a blankety blank, a McLaren. I'm like, I have driven a McLaren. It's, it doesn't touch a Lamborghini. Even the cheapest Lamborghini, the Gallardo, is better than the best McLaren. I drove them both. It's not even close. People say, you need, you know, these little crotch rocket cars that people have. I driven them. They're not like a Lamborghini or a Bugatti. Cheap Lamborghini around 100. No, cheap Lamborghinis are not 100 grand unless they're used. Not a new one. But that's not the goal, because some people don't care about cars. The goal is the baddest ass life, by your definition. So as long as you, it's like for some people, baddest ass life would be wife, three kids, husband, three kids, live in the suburbs, be chill, that's your, okay, you won. You won the game against yourself. It's only a game against yourself. Who knows? Some of the smartest people in the world think that everyone else might be an illusion. It's possible. Even Bill Gates once said, it's possible that the universe only exists for us. He meant himself. He said, if so, it's going pretty well for me. That's what Bill Gates said. So there's a possibility that I'm a phantom, that I'm an illusion, and that the world just exists for your purpose. So it's a competition against you because we don't. you is the only reality that we truly know. Even the philosopher, what's the great philosopher said? I think, therefore I am. He could only prove his own consciousness through his own thoughts. He could improve that anyone else was real because he, he couldn't be inside their mind, inside their consciousness. Now that's a poor boy explanation of I think therefore I am, you know, Descartes and these great thinkers, but I'm saying to you, is competition with you, are you winning the competition right now? Are you? I don't know if I am, but I'm doing better than I was last year. That's what I care about. I have not won yet. There's things I want to do, and I don't think you want to win. When you win, you want to die. You know, it's like retiring. People, people go, I want to retire young. You mean you want to die young? You know how many people die right after they retire and lose all the challenges? Like, Why do you want to retire? Joel Salatin just said, pick a job that doesn't feel like work. That's what I like. This doesn't feel like work. I'm just talking like I would talk. I'm talking to you guys like I would talk to old friends sitting around, you know, a fireplace, a barbecue, shooting the shit on a Saturday. We're just talking. So, quote unquote, I guess this is me working, but it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like work if you do it right. Ty, what's your opinion on marijuana? Avoid extreme ideologies. Those of you who are obsessed with marijuana, you're wrong. And those of you who hate marijuana are probably also wrong. Marijuana, like, you smoking every day, for the most part, you're destroying your brain physiology. There's some people like Snoop Dogg. I, he was in the the football game that I played in. So this dude's doing good. He smokes marijuana all the time. So it's an individual experiment you got to run. Clearly, he's doing okay with weed. I think artists sometimes it, it works. But I've tested it for myself. If I smoke too much weed, I am a worse businessman. I have a harder time computing numbers and marketing. So you. Don't be, don't be in love with anything. 
some people I meet, they're like so loyal to marijuana. I'm like, it's a plant, okay? It ain't real. It's not like it's your mom that you have to defend her. It's just a fucking plant. You know there's other plants that Indian use. There's mushrooms, there's peyote, there's ayahuasca. You don't have to, okay, hemp is cool, I get it. And then there's other people that think marijuana is the end of the world. It ain't the end of the world. I'll tell you this, you ever have a house party and you have a choice between a whole bunch of drunk people and a whole bunch of people smoking weed, give everybody weed. I mean, don't break the law, don't go to jail, but if it's legal, give everybody weed because nobody fights when they're in weed. People just chill. So if I had a choice and everyone were going to be drunk or high, alcohol, I'll put it this way, alcohol is worse for you than marijuana. I bet you every scientist in the world would agree with that. Boy, alcohol will, my dad was an alcoholic, destroys more families, it, 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 70% of murders or even higher are when the person was drunk. Almost all murders statistically are from alcohol. People don't normally shoot people. Almost all domestic violence, somebody's drinking. So I'm gonna tell you this, that's my opinion on it. If you have the choice um, and it's legal or you can get you a legal card, in California you can smoke weed legally now, that's pretty much. And, you, and you're addicted to alcohol versus marijuana, dude, go with weed all day long. And every scientist in the world will back me up. Now, as I told you, you can go, you can get too much water. If you drink too much water, what happens? Chinese water torture. They used to make people drink water till they literally, their internal organs, their stomach exploded. Yeah, so I mean, water can kill you too. Chinese water torture, they used to do it all the time for centuries. So avoid extremes, man, extremes. Some people, some of you guys are in the gym too much. You got a six pack of the, of the stomach, your brain is a one pack and your bank accounts you know, a fat ass obese person. Time to, a little less bench sometimes, a little more bank. You know, somebody said, I don't believe that. What do you mean, you don't believe? <laughs> you don't believe that some people are imbalanced? Uh, yep, too much of a good thing can be a mad thing. That, that's called the hedonic experiment. For those of you who really think, who here is smart enough to know what a hedonic experiment means? Everybody said they're smart. What was the hedonic experiment done in history by a philosopher? Not hedonism, no. No, 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 no. Some of you are think you're so smart, I see your comments trying to correct me. Come on, talk's cheap. If you're smart, you'll be able to answer this real quick without Googling it. We got all the people going to Google. Come on now. Some of you college graduates, you're smarter than me, right? Let's answer. What's the hedonic experiment mean? The dog in the box being zapped? No. Basically, the hedonic experiment was a philosopher said, imagine you could have an orgasm, like an orgasm for human sex is the high, is one of the highest amounts of pleasure. If you look at the dopamine release in your brain, all these factors, right? But he said, what if you had to have one nonstop for 12 hours? Would you want to have an orgasm for 12 hours? No, because you need the contrast. You gotta come down because if you had 12 hour orgasm, 10 hours into it, it wouldn't feel like an orgasm anymore because it would be new normal. So you'd reset what's normal and it wouldn't feel good anymore. So what that basically means is that in all things you need a series of balances. You know, some people wanna be happy all the time. Only a dog is happy all the time. If you have no pain in your life, you're doing something wrong. You know, you want to have ups and downs. There are nothing wrong with that. You don't want a business that always succeeds. Mark Zuckerberg didn't always succeed. He was uh, in real trouble at one point. He found a mentor, Steve Jobs, helped him. Steve Jobs was in real trouble at one point. Jeff Bezos was in real trouble at one time. Elon Musk was, I think, $7 billion in debt at 2008 or 2009. He was in real trouble. People were laughing at his business model. But what happens is out of that, creates the contrast bias. You go down, you create new strengths out of the pain and you rise back up. You just don't want the ups and downs to be too high. Same with weed. You smoke weed all the time, you're resetting into an artificial world because not everybody else is smoking weed all the time. So you, you're, you're like living an alternate reality 
and it's going to come back and bite you in the butt. But if you're, so you don't have to go, you could, you know, I, here's what I recommend for everybody with substances. Every once in a while, go a long time without them just to prove that you're tough enough to do it. So if you drink a lot and you say you're not an alcoholic, well, good. Next six months, don't drink at all. If you ain't an alcoholic, it will be easy. Like, I don't love pastrami sandwiches that much. I'm not a pastrami sandwich-aholic. So if someone like, Ty, for the next six months, you can't have pastrami sandwiches, I'll be like, okay. Don't mean a thing to me. The toughest piece people in the world, stuff like that doesn't mean a thing to me. I lived for two and a half years with no electricity at the Amish with no running water or toilet. Outhouse. I already done it. So I proved to myself that I'm tough enough to do it. Try it yourself. You know, people go, oh, I, I, I'm tough. Well, then if you love weed, go six months without it. Then you'll prove to yourself it's not an addiction. And then you can do it more often. I mean, some things you got to be careful with. These opioids and all that heroin shit that's blowing up the world, that'll get you hooked in one thing. But again, even there, society is giving people too many prescription drugs, period. Now, some people need prescription drugs, but even the top doctors and the scientists in the world, this shit's being overprescribed. You can't give kids Coca-Cola at seven years old, 40 to 60 gram drink of sugar, 40 to 60 grams of sugar, which is more than an adult should have in one day. You can't give it to a seven year old kid, tell him to sit in a classroom for eight hours. Then when he's hyper or she's hyper, then give him Ritalin. That's some bullshit. How are you gonna do that? I mean, that's why I said, half the world sucks. Half the doctors in the world suck. Half the school teachers in the world suck. Half the policemen. People are like, oh, there's police brutality. No shit. You think normal people want to become police officers? People, that's like saying, Ty, you ain't going to believe this. I met 10 Navy SEALs, and they're kind of violent. Uh, you think it attracts preschool teachers? No. 50% of police officers are psycho. I've been, I used to hire 20 cops uh, a weekend for my nightclubs. Some of them were batshit murderous guys. I remember there was a guy when I first, I got a first nightclub that I really was bigger was a place called Parazot. It was a restaurant turned into a nightclub. I did it for years in Raleigh, North Carolina. It was in Durham, it's still there. And um, the first cop that I had to hire, they were like, I took over from these Colombian guys, like a hostile takeover nightclub. And I don't know if these Colombians paid off this cop or whatever, but I swear for a one year, I was watching my back. This cop, I was sure he had a hit out on me. And I've seen cops do shady stuff, but there's also cops that'll save your damn life. If tonight you wake up and there's some robber walking around your house and you call the cops, who do you want to show up? Ballet, <laughs> ba yoga, yoga meditation police officer? Or do you want to do with a tattoo on his face that's killed three people? Br give me the badass police officer. I got security at my house at night. Who do you think I want security? You think I got 130 pound yoga instructors who meditate? Mm -mm. I got big ass guys, special forces guys, <laughs> cops, people who have shot people in the face. So yes, 50% of people suck, okay. Somebody said a yoga instructor could probably kick the shit out of him. No, you don't want to be protected by a yoga instructor, my friend. Yoga is great and some UFC fighters that you do not want to be. <laughs> Good luck with that, man. Go travel to, down to South America and bring your three yoga instructors, your 330-pound yoga instructors. Go, go walk the favelas of Brazil with your 130-pound yoga on. And then when someone comes up to you with guns, you can... You can try to get them to do downward dog and you can roll out the mat and talk about vegetarianism with them. <laughs> you're gonna take all your clothes. They're gonna take all your clothes. You're gonna be naked in the streets of favela, favelas. You'd be lucky to be alive. So there's a time when you want mean people and there's a time you want nice people. Ty, do you think the 50% that suck is ever gonna increase over time? It already has. This is a low ball number. This is my eternal optimism for the world. Okay, let's do the, uh, 
the three winners. I'm gonna look on Twitter, Facebook, look for people who press the share button. I'm just gonna pick the three, first three I see. I don't feel like doing a very complicated picking method. Are you able to do it all from your phone? Or do you yeah, I can do it from my phone because I can see the, uh, I got, there we go, all right. My Facebook, we'll, we'll pick two on Facebook and one on Instagram. 433 people shared. Here's the first person. My Facebook, we'll, we'll pick two on Facebook and one on Instagram. Wait a 433 sec. People shared. Here's the oh first shit, person. I'm hearing myself. Hold on one second. I'm not sure if I can tell how I... Here, I found the first person. Ranil Chris Ruano. Number two, Nancy Soto. There we go. Nancy Soto. Ranil Chris Ruano and that picture of Nancy Soto. Congratulations, Ranil and Nancy. Now, let's pick a Twitter person. Periscoping, who retweeted. It's easier to pick on Twitter. For anybody but hurt that I didn't pick them, well, I don't care. Anytime people get butt hurt around you, one of the best answers you can say is, I actually don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, I get butt hurt too. Where were you when I was fucking sad? Next time someone in your family's butt hurt because you say the truth to them and it's like, I'm really mad at you. I'm offended. Be like, so? I don't. Uh, welcome to. Just spell out Earth. Earth is a land of pain, sorrow, and disappointment and happiness. So, you know. Oh man, my phone died. Hold on. Hey, I'll, I'll reboot it. Take me a second. Can you use my Twitter? Yeah, I'll do it. But it might be good to hard them so that you can see. Give me one second. This thing, I'll talk till this reboots. Take two minutes. How much is your net worth? Three dollars. Three dollars. Any people sometimes, uh, if a girl, ever, guys, if you guys make money and girls, I told this to one of my buddies who's actually standing here. He said he meets all these girls and you know, he's a lawyer and the girls are like, um, what nice restaurant are you taking me to? First of all, that's an automatic disqualification if a girl main goal from your first date is the quality of restaurant. The first date is supposed to be about getting to know the person. So definitely tell them the shittiest place in LA. Be like, we are going to eat cockroaches off the dam. <laughs> 80% F-rated taco stand in, you know, Grungeville. Because if she likes you then, then she's gonna like you on the upside. People, you gotta think chess. Some of you need to play chess. To me, life is basically a chess game. And sometimes I make a mistake and I lose the chess game. And then you go back and you play again. And then we all die, you know? Someone said, but Ty, Ty, you don't have game. Yeah, but I got hotter girls than you. So time to get your bank account up. <laughs> Some guys go, Ty, you only got girls for money. Then I go, maybe you're right. Then what's your fucking excuse? You ain't got girls and you ain't got money. I, that's like saying to Hugh Hefner, girls only like you because you had Playboy. He'd be like, yep. Why do you think I started Playboy? What you think? Uh, Larry David, you said? Yeah, Larry David, the, the, <laughs> the one of the richest guys in Hollywood. He's, he created Seinfeld. And curb your enthusiasm. He was at. I was at a. I had lunch with him, and he was at a stand up, and a heckler yelled out, because he had a pretty girlfriend. He has a pretty girlfriend. He's like, that girl's only with you. You're ugly. That girl's only with you because you have money. And he goes, Why do you think I made money? Why would you think I made that as a goal? Uh, what do I think about girls? I'll tell you what the founder of the UFC told me and the son of the man who invented Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, okay? He said, Gracie, red belt. He said, Ty, as a man, as you become successful, you'll have two main causes of trouble. Eating too much food, all right? Getting fat, getting out of shape, number one. No, Dana White did not start the UFC. He bought it from the Gracies. Number two, women. So. Women are 
Now, if you're a woman or whatever, you know, I'm sure it's the same with men. But it, it's more, it's what I told you here. 50% of men that you date or 50% of women that you're going to date suck. The other 25% would be good boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, or husband, but they're lazy. They're, ah, they care more about themselves. They're too narcissistic. So you got to become the master of filtration. That's why the stuff like Tinder is kind of a crappy thing because it always, wh who do you think is attracted to Tinder? These people. You think awesome ass girls? First of all, if a girl's badass, no guy wants to leave her. So she's not going to be available that much. Good girls aren't available. You see a girl that's been, here's a warning sign. A girl has been single for a long time. You got to be like, what's wrong with you that nobody wants you? Same with guys. So you don't have to be married, but if nobody ever wants you, you got to look in the mirror and be like, damn, I still got, I got something wrong with me. And again, no one will level with people in the world and just say this because people are so politically correct that people get butt hurt when I say that, but that's irrefutable. It's called a priori logic. It's impossible to argue. And believe it or not, I know a thing or two about science and that's exactly backed up in science. Online Tinder has a higher proportion of what psychologists call avoidant people. Avoidant is a psychological problem. Clinically, there's a great book on it called Attached by Heller and Levine, two famous scientists. Online dating sites have a lot of avoidance. Avoidance are people who avoid, the closer you try to get to them, they have attachment issues. You know, so um, Tinder attracts. So if you're just looking for a hookup, Tinder is badass. But here's my problem with it. Um, you ever heard of the saying, you should have your cake and eat it too? What happens if you meet a badass girl, but you're just looking for, you know, like a fling, but she turns out to be so good that you want to be in a long-term relationship? Well, then you don't want to find them from the wrong place because you automatically, you're only getting your cake. You're not being able to eat it too. You need both. So I recommend to people, not that I'm an absolute expert on this, but I know a thing too about dating pretty women. I can tell you that. I don't know anything about dating men. Can't help you ladies uh, or gay guys. But um, the best women are the ones that even if you ain't looking for a long-term relationship, there's the potential there. So if you're hanging out with piece of crap, low-level girls, and there's a lot of low-level girls and a lot of low-level guys, you're automatically cutting off half of the, long, of the potential right there because there's no long-term. So I've done, I mean, I've been before when I didn't want a long-term relationship and then I met a girl and I was like, damn, this one's a keeper. That happened to me once um, years ago. I, was, uh, I wasn't really dating anyone, but I was dating this one girl named Jen and my friend Mike came in town, my business partner, and he's like, dude, let's go out. I'm, I'm here for two days. Like, let's go on a double date. Get me a girl. So I called up this Jen girl who I didn't, I wasn't that attracted to. I'd gone on like two dates before, but she wasn't. It was, she's not really my type. Cool person though. So I, I called her up and I was like, hey Jen, you got a friend? Um, the, this is when LeBron played for Cleveland the first time. Cle the Cavs were playing the Clippers. And I said, I got tickets. Do you have a friend? And Jen goes, yeah, my next door neighbor will come. And so um, it was when I had a Maserati. I'll never forget. I drove downtown. It was right by the Staples Center. They lived, it was like on Olive or one of the, I forget what the name of the street is. It was like one street over from the Staples Center. So I pull up, I call, we're here, and Jen's like, okay, I'm, <clears throat> I'm coming down, and her friend's name was Kim. And dude, the door opened up. I'll never forget, this only happened to me one time in my life. And that door opened up, and Jen walked out, who I already knew, and Kim walked out. And to this day, is one of the most gorgeous women I have ever seen. And I was like, oh no, I made a mistake, because I was, out with Jen and my friend was with Kim and Kim got in the back of the car and Mike was in the back of the car so I'm here with Jen and nothing wrong with Jen she's pretty and all that but she's not my type Kim was my type like built like just and I was dude it's the only time in my life I had to sit in a box seat us four and my friend was Mike was stoked he's like Ty you are the best friend ever you got hook me up with a fucking super I mean this this girl was the baddest of the bad and I've been around some of the baddest. And 
So I sat there through this whole night just being like pissed. I'm with this girl I don't like. I'm like, motherfucker. The only time in my life I went, actually did what they do in the movie. I went in the bathroom at a Staples Center and I punched the paper towel thing and hurt my hand and broke the thing. You know how they do that shit in movies and I always see it and I'm like, who does that? I did it. Anyway, I texted my friend my, uh, afterwards. Mike was staying at a hotel and I had to go to San Diego's for Thanksgiving. I remember this. I go down to Thanksgiving and I texted Mike. I said, listen, Mike, this chick is so badass. You are not allowed to have a fling with this chick. I'm like, you cannot have a fling with this girl. So I basically, um, he was, you know, he was a good friend. He goes, you know what, Ty? All right, you can date her. So I texted her and I was like, this is, a, this is the weirdest text I ever sent. But you know, sometimes honesty, radical honesty with women work. I said to her, I texted her. It was under the table at Thanksgiving. My 90, my grandma back there was like 95 or something. And I'm texting under the table. She's mad that I have my phone. And I text, I had gotten Kim's number and I was like, Kim, um, do you believe in love at first sight? And she's like, yeah, she was a Leo. So Leo's always believe in love. She goes, yeah, I really do. And I was like, because I am sure I am in love with you. And, then, and we, had, we dated for like two years. It ended up being a little complicated at the end for other reasons. But you know what? Have both potential sides. If I had met that chick on Tinder, then I would always be in the back of my mind like, ah, this is that Tinder kind of girl. <laughs> Somebody said he sold Kim. <laughs> I did not sell Kim. She's actually married and has a kid now. I saw, I see on Facebook. Um, but uh, yeah, if I, if I had met her in the wrong location, like if you, dudes, I know dudes that go to strip clubs to meet girls. Don't do that. Strippers are fucking back crazy. That's the dumbest. I see guys selling courses on how to get strippers. Yeah, have money. That was the best way to get, or be a freaking psychopath with your, and tattoo your face. Okay, then you get to it. That's the two types of women, uh, men that most strippers like. Bat crazy dudes, ex-convicts. So if you want to go to prison for a few years so you can come out and date a stripper, be my guest. Or number two, you can have them use you for your money. It sounds like the world's worst plan. It, can, it sounds like how can you get leprosy? I'm going to sell a course. How to get leprosy in 90 days. Um, no offense if anybody is a stripper, but you know, any of you strippers watching, uh, would you want to date your coworkers? Would you want to marry one of your fucking coworkers? Shit. Come on now. Let's, let's be real here. Somebody said, did Kim fall into the water inside by the front door? <laughs> with the, no, it, with Kim, it was more, it was no big falling out. We just kind of drifted apart. After, we broke up and then we got back together. I've learned whenever you break up, get back together, you, you probably should have just stayed broken up. So, um, yeah. Somebody says, Law, you sound like you have experience. Ty likes BBWs. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, I'm not going to comment on that. But, Kate, they calling you a BBW. Do you know what a BBW is? Big. Big. <laughs> no, I know what I want. I know what I like. Come here. I have something. Um, I'm not big. No. I, she is. Wait. Come stand in here. Uh, Kate. It, <laughs> I'm a little Kate tired is a, a, T uh, a TTW. Tight. Toned and tanned. Overly tanned. <laughs> FTW. That is a fake wash. tan I that I told her not I to get. I have a few hours left, and then I would be nice It's and one of the and... worst looks a woman can have. You look like Donald Trump's <laughs> color right now. <laughs> By the way, not to, uh, I don't want to insult the so president. Someone said put Kate back in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to insult Donald Trump, but I think he does literally do spray tan because oh, yeah. he has white eyes where he yeah, must put the goggles on. <laughs> I noticed that. Did you notice that? Yeah. But you guys will see no, me later sure, in. Okay, TTW, I, I'm not with BBWs, I'm with TTWs. Somebody said Kate's eyebrows. What about her eyebrows? How do you feel about Kate Orange? <laughs> All right, let me do a last, I haven't Snapchat. Uh, who's following me on Snap? 
Snapchat, you just missed a three hour live millionaire mentor seminar going live there. Probably about 100, 200,000 people watched. One of the things I was telling people, always remember this. People lie, but numbers don't. People lie, but numbers don't. Next time people tell you they're doing stuff, ask for the numbers on anything, on anything, business or otherwise. People will lie to you. They lie to themselves. I rarely believe people. I like what Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. Okay, the last person. Did I quote Floyd Mayweather? Some of you guys are creative. I love these comments sometimes. I'm just like, that's the best thing about Twitter. Some of the comments. Chase a check, never chase a bitch. This dude's rapping. <laughs> Isn't that future? Chase a check, never yeah, chase a bitch. Mask off. Yeah, mask off. Favorite song. Come on, man. Um, all right, who's gonna get this hundred bucks on Twitter? Dun, dun, dun. You guys see James Harden chilling at the house? That's a pretty badass video. He just signed a $230 million contract. This is funny if you haven't heard it. <laughs> he goes, I hear there's a vibe at the crib, Ty. My man. Jay Harden got a serious beard, man. Serious beard. And Kevin Durant is a tall ass dude. Metrodome. Metrodome? This is a singer in Brazil verified on Instagram. Isn't Metrodome? I feel like that's in a song. Yeah, sounds familiar. Are you in that song too? Are you in Future Song? What am I looking for? God, man, Twitter changed its algorithm. Twitter is sometimes one of the stupid. Of all the social media networks, that's dumb. Sometimes Twitter. Somebody said, name dropper. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't be butt hurt that James Harden was here. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, let's see. 275 retweets. Let me pick somebody. Who we got? First one, I said Bama Logic. Bama Logic. Why don't you buy Twitter? Isn't Twitter publicly traded now? Yep. Fuck that. You don't want to buy a publicly traded company. I mean, you can try to do a hostile takeover. Uh, I mean, Twitter has some good things to it. I like the potential, but the best, I, I tell you this, Snapchat's a damn good, is a damn good company, man. Snap, even though people talk shit, I mean, Instagram is too, but Snapchat pioneered a lot of stuff, even the stuff that Instagram is doing. I like, I like Snap. I mean, I like, you got to respect all these networks. They've done huge things, YouTube is a monster. I mean, if I could own any of the networks, I'd probably want to own YouTube. More people use YouTube because they, there are embedded videos everywhere, you know? Someone says Snapchat is not profitable. That don't mean shit. Uber's not profitable. It's still worth $68 billion. Ty, why do you think people talk shit about you about being fake and a scam? You know, most of the scam stuff that's online on the internet, if you look on the date, it was back when I started, like in 2015. So what happened is, when I first come on the scene, then you'll learn, this is, this. I've seen this multiple times in my life. When you pop on the scene and you're new on the scene, people talk shit because you're an unknown. So I'll give you an example. LeVar Ball, right? The Ball Boy, the Ball Brothers. They're new on the scene, so people are talking shit about them, but eventually it dies down. LeBron James, people used to talk a lot of crap about LeBron James. But eventually he rises up and, and now there's not so much. So a lot of that scam stuff is like when I first come out and people are like, oh, he just rented a Lamborghini for a day. But Snapchat changed a lot of that because Snapchat tells the truth. Remember I tell you people lie, but numbers don't? With Snapchat, people have been watching my Snapchat. I mean, I get a lot of people watching my Snapchat, okay? So my Snapchat has been viewed tens of millions of times, like whatever, I don't even know. I mean. One of my snaps got viral on the on the snap story just at the, a few months ago and got 8 million views in a day. Three of my snaps got like 3 million, 3 million, 2 million, something like that. I posted a screenshot for all of you cynical biatches out there. Um, I posted it back in. It was out when I was at the NBA final game. So snap tells the truth because you can't lie on Snapchat. Instagram, people can do one thing, take 20 pictures and post them over a year. But with Snapchat puts the white um, around it, 
so it shows you if it's a pass upload. So now people know that I don't, the cars is not a one day thing. I've been in this house now, this month will be two years. So people were like, oh, there was a video conspiracy that there was a realtor that I was using the house for a day and I shot my here in my backyard video and that was one of my assistants. And there became a big scandal that Marna, she still works for me, that Marna was somehow a realtor that had bumped into my ad and I didn't know it. And I, I mean, so it's just like people dumb. But now those people, even some of the people that hated on me, now they're my friends. So you just, got, remember I told you thick skin? I'm ready to go into battle. As long as you let me battle you back. Oh, dude, I have, like I said, any of the people that want to do a battle and like, oh, Ty's dumb, Ty, I'm like, come, they'll have a battle with the wits. We'll have 200,000 people watch it live. I'm not afraid of any of that. If I lose, I lose. I've been doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I've been doing MMA stuff for since I was, I mean, for over a decade. You lose some. Look at Conor McGregor. He's a badass. He got choked out real bad by Diaz. That's just how the game goes. Nobody's undefeated forever. Mike Tyson got knocked out of it. Muhammad Ali didn't win everything. You know, nobody. I've been watching UFC. My, my first MMA teacher was in UFC 1. Everybody lose. Hicks and Gracie is the only guy they say didn't lose. My Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu teacher, he was um, 365 and 0. Hegan Machado. He's a coral belt in Jiu-Jitsu. He's one of the top guys in history. The youngest black belt in U.S. history. He got it at 18. And he's lost. He lost to Hicks and Gracie. So what I'm saying is, if there's stuff about you, if there's this, it's just how the game goes. And if you're not tough enough to be in the game, I'll read you this, and then I'll end. This is a cool quote. This is from a mad dog, is his name, he's a general. Um, and this is what he said. <clears throat> this is a quote. He goes, I come in peace. I didn't bring artillery, but I'm pleading with you with tears in my eyes. If you fuck with me, I'll kill you all. So he, he was like that dude that's like at a party. I once had a situation like that in my life. I told you I had this issue with these Colombians when I first got on the nightclub business. And um, so I kind of took over the nightclubs and these dudes, I didn't know, these were like real Colombians. So it was kind of naive on my part. And so I took one of the clubs they used to run. The owner gave it to me instead of them. They were selling a lot of cocaine, a lot of shit. So I not only took their nightclub, but I took their spot to sell shit. And I was at this other nightclub one night and I went to the bathroom myself. It was called The Office in Raleigh. That was the name of the nightclub. And like 10 Colombians, I was in the bathroom. I turned around like 10 of the dudes came and pinned me to the corner. They didn't touch me, but they were like all up on me, like intimidating me. And I said, I told them, I said, okay, you guys got me on this one. I was like, but if you fucking touch me, I will hunt you each down one by one if you don't kill me right now. And they fucking left me alone. I did. I didn't do anything illegal, but I scared the shit out of them. You see all these big guys that are with me now? That's when the first time I started getting big guys like that. I talked to my dad. My dad been from Harlem. I, call, I talk to my dad, I'm like, what would my dad do? My dad's a prison guy, I didn't grow up with him. My dad, my brother, who grew up with my dad, he said, Ty, our dad always rolled with big ass motherfuckers. And I'm like, why? He's like, my, my dad used to have this big Russian guy that was always with him, huge. Like Rome, but a white guy, like the mountain. And my, my, friend, my uh, brother goes, we call them keepers of the peace, because people settle the fuck down when you got enough big guys so, yeah, I'm not going to go into the whole Colombian thing, but uh, what Mad Dog said, he was like, what well, this general said, is like, you know what, I come in peace, I ain't going to attack you, and I'm genuinely pleading with you with tears in my eyes, you know, but if you fuck with me, I'll kill you all. That's a good mentality, not literally, that you got to kill people, but when you have haters, you like, listen, whatever, I'm tough. We can brawl here. You can talk shit. We can do it. Oh, it's okay. 
but I'm coming for you if you talk too much shit about me. Now, this is what Zach told me that I thought was hilarious. <laughs> he always said, yeah, but you know what else Mad Dog said? Be polite, be professional, but have a plan to kill everyone you meet. <laughs> this isn't me. This is one of the generals in the United States Army, but this is the best one. He said, you go into Afghanistan. You got these Taliban guys who slap women around for five years because they don't wear a veil. You know, guys like that ain't got no manhood left anyway. So it's a hell of a lot of fun to shoot them. Actually, it's quite fun to fight them, you know. It's a hell of a hoot. It's fun to shoot sometime. I like to be right up there with you. I like brawling. That's what we need more in the world. This dude's going to die at some point, but so is all the pussy people in the world. And he, got, he lived a cool life. That's why I said, whoever lives the most interesting life wins the game, in my opinion. If you're religious, you might say whoever goes to heaven, all that. I don't know much about heaven. I can't speak to that. But I'm telling you, on this planet, whoever lives the most interesting life, and a part of an interesting life is you will have a tax on you. It'll come from different sources. It might be the IRS. It might be a false accusation from a girl or a guy. It, I mean, just look at the other day. I saw a false accusation, that Texas case where this girl accused, I think, a whole football team of raping her, and then she was like, oop, I was just joking. And these dudes, you know, it's like, wow, that shit happens. You, you, the little kids get kidnapped and killed by crazy people. Those parents got to live the rest of their life knowing, I mean, the world will throw, this is what Charlie Munger says, the world's going to throw incredible blows at you. Some of you will fall apart. And some of you will be like Nelson Mandela who was falsely imprisoned, spent 27 years on a rock, breaking rocks day and night, didn't get to see his family for 27 years, came out, wasn't bitter, changed the nation, changed the world, and won a Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, some of you are like him and some of you aren't. 50% of people suck. 25% people got potential but lazy and procrastinate. 25% of you. So we got 100,000 people. It's probably 25,000 people on here. You know, so I hope you're one of those people. And if you're not, I don't have a solution for you. That's really what it comes down to. I don't, there's no solution. People always want solutions. For some people, you got some friends in your, and family that there's no solution for. Absolutely none, unless they want to change themselves. And most people don't like to change. They're risk averse. Okay, I'm out.